If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this random episode of Whoa. Mind Pump. We had Wait, a lot of fun. Can I call this like Stand By Me? We had a fun. start out kind of like nostalgic. We should oh. we should warn the audience that looks... No specific. fitness. Well, I mean, we get into fitness business. That's true. We get, that's true. End. There's some really good fitness business lessons in there. So if you're somebody who's into that, you will definitely enjoy the, the end of this. But if you are looking for just good fitness information that we normally provide on our Q&A, this episode is no, not This is more, like an old this episode. is fun conversation. This is uh, entertaining. This is flashbacks when we were kids. We talked about our cartoons when we were kids, first big purchases, our first kisses, first heartbreaks. Frenching. First hand jobs. Doug didn't put that up there, but I'll make sure to mention that. Good, 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 good. Testosterone and the crazy shit that it makes us do because it drives us. Oh. Damn testosterone. Yeah. yeah. Pivotal. If, if masturbation like talk, animals. talking triggers you, you should listen <laughs> yeah. to this one. Yeah. We talk about piv- pivotal moments in our lives. I think I said glittery pool at some point. Oh my yeah. God, yeah. you did. Yeah. yeah. As young men, we talk about lessons from... The school that we all came through that taught us to be the badasses that we think we are yes, today. Bro. Make sure I put that in there, sound yeah, humble. Uh, right. We all worked at 24 Hour Fitness, so we talk about the days working there, a lot of fitness business. Also, if you're lucky enough the to catch- speak for themselves. If you're lucky enough to catch this episode on the day that it drops, you have like a few hours left for our MAPS split promotion. We just came out with a new program. It's a bodybuilder program, pure bodybuilder, hardcore bodybuilder program. It's our first split called Map Split. You go to mapsplit.com. That's two S's in the middle. And if you use the code SPLIT50, you'll get $50 off. Now, for those of you who are beginners and who aren't wanting to work out six days a week or seven days a week in the gym, you want to work at home maybe, you can get Maps anywhere. And all month, that program is half off. That's 50% off. You can find that program on our website, mindpumpmedia.com. This is pre-Justina. You know, before Justin went to Justina. Oh. This is, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is pre-Justina. Yeah, that's not funny. Everybody used to call me that because I used to put my name, my last name initial too close <laughs> to Justin. So it said <laughs> Justina. <laughs> so everybody's like, Justina. So cute. I like it. So I'm not cute. Justina. What is, it, what is these pretzels are making me thirsty? That's a these movie. These pretzels are making... No, it's, not, it's from uh, Seinfeld. Oh. Kramer. Oh. Mm. You weren't a Seinfeld lit watcher? Is that right? Watcher? A little bit. Or is that yeah. a Seinfeld fan? Uh, viewer. Wa- wa- watcher. Absorber. You can't say a watcher. A watcher. I, I became one in college because oh. that was like, we had like two channels. And so it was like Seinfeld and like, <laughs> like Fox. Sp- yeah, like yeah. news. No, watcher sounds creepy, doesn't it? Like I'm, I'm a watcher. Like, whoa. Stop watching. <laughs> I'm a watcher. Stop, yeah, stop yeah. watching things. What the yeah. fuck's wrong with you? Yeah. That's I, like that. That's like that song. I'll be watching you. Like the creepiest song ever, but it's yeah. such a great song. Yeah, you're like, what are you doing, bro? Yeah, yeah, Were you into sitcoms? Were you a big sitcom uh, watcher? I liked. Uh, let, let me see. I liked Perfect Strangers. <laughs> Bal- I, Bal- Balky. Yeah, oh yeah, Balky Bar- Bartokamus. Bartokamus. I like. Kind of look like him. I did. Uh, I loved The Incredible you Hulk. Got that a lot, didn't you? Of course, yeah. The Incredible Hulk. Remember Is that, that really one? a sitcom though? It's not a sitcom, but it's a series. Yeah, Seinfeld's Lou a sitcom. Right? Now? Where, yeah, where he just like be all painted. But I used crazy. to ha- I hated the whole show except for the Hulk. Like, I know the whole I was time, always like, waiting for Hulk. Like, to come, come on, Hulk! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> get him mad. Hurry up, someone yeah, get him mad. Dude, lift a car up and you know throw it. Yeah, yeah I was th- always when I was a kid. I watched. I'm like, just make yourself the Hulk all the time. Yeah. You're, the rest of you Stop sucks. Being a little bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just be angry all the time. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, somebody piss him off, please. Do, do you know what I remember too? God, kids are so spoiled, right? When we were kids, cartoons were. There was a specific time you had to watch cartoons. It was mm-hmm. after school, yeah. only for a couple hours, yep. and it was Saturday morning. Yep. Now, I remember when the Saturday morning... Let's let's see if you guys remember this. Do you guys remember when you knew Saturday morning cartoons were over? What show would come on? Oh, <sighs> the next show? Like silver, oh, this is Silver g- Spoons? Or? No. No, 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 no. That's afternoon. That, yeah, was, that, was, that was when cartoons yeah. were yeah, over in right. the afternoon. So yes. that's, a, that's a good memory yes, right But there. I like Silver Spoons, too, though. Yeah. Right. So, so okay. Mm. God, you're going to get me here. Oh, dude. you're gonna As soon as I say it, you're going to be like, oh, Shit. yeah. No, 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 Mr. Belvedere? No. No, no it was a Saturday morning. It's Saturday morning stuff. This You're naming show, all afternoon stuff right now. I know. I'm thinking Like all Charles afternoon. in Charge. Yes, exactly. all, those are all the ones that came. Charles in Charge. Uh, God, what was that? Okay. Damn, you're gonna, I, I don't oh, want you to give it to me because I feel like I'm going to get it's, it. It me off. You, it, you knew it because you'd hear the beginning of the opening of this show. Like, and damn, like, cartoons fuck! are over. Yeah. Yes. Soul Train. 
Oh, oh yes, you're right. Yeah, that's right. You're right. The train would choo choo choo. And he'd be like, fuck, <laughs> man. I don't watch people dancing. Yeah. <laughs> I want to like, watch or like Geraldo. Yeah, I want to watch Voltron. What a weird transition, right? If you're if you're in charge of like organizing the schedule for like shows and everything like that, you're like you have the attention of like ninety percent of the like the twelve year olds in the world yeah. at you know from seven a.m. to ten a.m. Mm-hmm. and then here comes Soul Train. Yep, hey, like well, what maybe got like kids to get up and dance. Which, by you know the way, I mean? as an adult, as an adult, Soul Train's fucking awesome. I watch it. Or watch maybe it. that's the theory is the yeah. kids get up really early in the morning on Saturdays and they because this is what I would do at my house. This yep. is my, I had a dad. This that, is quite Quiet time for that, mom and dad. Yeah, yeah mom and dad were still in the cinnamon toast crunch, still in the bedroom at and like nine o'clock. Still, yeah, you're watching he's doing Cliff. adult things. And Heathcliff, Heathcliff, no one should <laughs> terrorize that neighborhood. Yeah. Heathcliff, just don't be on time playing pranks on everyone, dude. He, oh, he, oh, I'll keep going. Yeah. Uh, let's keep going. All, he's all, got the whole the, rest of he's the got uh, a episode. trap memory yeah. for that shit. So trap. crazy. But yeah, you'd wake up early. You'd go downstairs or go out to the living room, whatever, try not to wake up mom and dad, and you'd put on your cartoons in your little pajamas, and you'd fucking go for it, and yeah. you'd eat cereal. Pour it. That's what I was going to say. It's pour, I used to, huge my bowl. sister and I would pour, <laughs> like I would pour the whole, the whole box of cereal would get yeah. crushed on a Saturday morning, dude, for sure, between the two yeah. of us. Yeah, because you knew mom and dad were, were there to, to, to monitor know, chaperone it. Yeah, yeah, no, if my parents were standing next to me, and I poured a bowl of like Lucky Charms, and they were right next to me. It wasn't to me. Lucky Charms. It was Marshmallow Mateys. No, no. You got the real one? Oh, you mean the generic the yeah. knockoff? It uh, depends. Yeah. Okay, because you know my mom was not going to buy fucking. <laughs> no. She was going to save fifty cents. My, my family wasn't very responsible with money, so we had it. We spent it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so wow. every once in a while, we were balling out with like it's, real coke, you know what? And real oh, fucking lucky shit. charms. Really? Damn. You weren't drinking Shasta, <laughs> yeah, to, bro? Shasta. <laughs> or Sunny Select? Sa- Safeway? Yes, yeah. Safeway Select. You know what's funny? Your your all family day. wasn't responsible because I know you say you grew up poor all the time. But, but then in a yeah. past episode, you told me how your mom bought your mom and dad bought your sister a horse. Yeah, you had like horses. <laughs> I'm, like, what the fuck? I'm like, where did this come from? Yeah, and how then, could you afford a horse? And that's the same house that we were evicted out of because they couldn't pay couldn't pay it. <laughs> you guys run the horse out of the house. <laughs> yeah. we're like, Everybody we're get so, on the we're horse. So equ- equestrian is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> where, oh. where would you keep the horse in the backyard? Oh, dude, you know what though? I tell you what. This is I've, all my lessons were taught like that as a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you have two ways you end up being. You either end up being like well and it's it's unfortunate i see my younger brother and sister following and my my sister and i the oldest are completely opposite my bro my youngest brother and sister have this very similar responsibility you know i got my brother who's like literally hit me up for money just the other day and i'm like dude you have a job you they they live in like a fifth wheel that it only costs like night their overhead's like 900 bucks a month and you both have jobs like he smokes so much weed that, you know, he goes through the little bit of money he has to last him from, you know, his paycheck to paycheck Friday. And it's like, I'll pay you back on Friday. I'm like, I don't understand. Like, you have no real bills. Like, and what are you doing? And then your cho- <laughs> your choices of what you're you're spending money on to be broke to where you had to borrow it from somebody. Like, so irresponsible, yeah. right? <laughs> so I think that my sister and I, we learned from that. We yeah. saw that like, hey, you know what? You probably shouldn't buy $1,000 horses. Go get, yeah. that ex- <laughs> PlayStation 5 when it comes out with yeah. VR. Yeah. You know, it's probably not a good so idea. So I had I have moments. That's why, too, I don't like to say that we were poor because <clears throat> I think that a, probably a, a better uh, example is we weren't the most responsible family when it comes to our finances as a kid because there's definitely kids that had it worse than me, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I know that. We always had a roof over our head. My family always found a way to provide food for us, even if that meant we were in a... You know, going to one of the the food cabinet lines or church was providing it for mm-hmm. us or whatever like that. We were fed. We had we had shelter. You know what I'm saying? So what happened to the horse? Did you guys eat it? <laughs> no, we did not. <laughs> I'm trying to remember right now how the, how just they pissed so many people off. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're you know if you're not, if you're yeah. not spending your money well, uh, you could end up in a situation. Well, it's like a valid that. question. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so it's, like, it's oh fuck, meat. we got yeah. a horse, but we don't have food. Yeah, what are we gonna do? What do we do now, Dad? Well, I remember that house. So that was the that was one of the first house is that my stepfather and my mom tried to purchase uh that was one of their they tried to buy and they worked out a deal with like a a, a rent to own uh with the owners and as a kid you know they, they didn't really share the finance with you so a lot of this like i had to put together as i got older like hey why aren't we always moving why do we go from here to there <laughs> yeah. wait a second i thought we bought this house or why is my dad standing on the deck with like a gun with because there's people coming up trying to take our car like this is oh my sense. god <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> this is weird like why are we doing things like this like so as a kid like you're not you know i'm at that i'm seventh eighth grade you yeah. know so you're trying to it's a, your kid your boy's age you know what i'm saying if you were seeing things going on like mm. and i think i was a pretty 
uh, smart kid. Like I was like, this didn't add up to me, you know, like why this was going on. Oh, dude, on. when I was a kid, my parents were excessively frugal for no, like they didn't have to be that. Like my mom would split napkins. Like we'd have dinner. <laughs> and she'd take the napkins and cut them in half. No, dude. But, really? you know, I, That's I, hilarious. I grew up that way. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know any, any, any different. I'm just like, oh, this is just how every, oh, nothing my was. My cousins were just like that. Yeah. Too, nothing was name brand. Yeah. There wasn't, I didn't, we didn't have anything that was name brand. It was like backwards, you know, Nike swoosh on the shoe. It was cereal. Like I said, marshmallow mateys or, you know, some other knockoff Fruitios. brand. Or whatever. Yeah, Fruitios. Yeah, so Fruitios. You know, my dad, like, parents bargained. They have like a parakeet everywhere. on there instead oh, of like, dude. The- so, what's your guys' thoughts on like name brands and things like that today? Like, how do you raise your kids and how are you around your family? Because I have my own, like, you know, I there's certain things that I I'm very mm. much so married and sold by the brand. Like the brand has got me. Like you know, it's sure. interesting. I, well, I think it still exists. You know, amongst their little circles too. Because my son really like he's obsessed with having Nikes, and I'm like, oh, I remember that. I remember when mm-hmm. Nike was a thing. Like where oh, I remember I went the to status sc- thing of shoes. Oh, every yeah. I used to go to literally. This was a, a an ensemble of mine every day of high school for at least a year or two, which was Nike flip flops. Mm. With double Nike socks, so the black and the white layered. So you can see oh, wait, oh, wow. in your flip flops? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me, yeah. So your slide in slippers. You're like you know? a cholo. Well, no, this is like a this is a very athletic style, <laughs> and it, it is today now too. Is, yeah. I, this guy like calming on style. Well, I don't know. It's so yeah, disconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where kids kids are. It's funny to see this happening again because that happened when I was a kid. This was very popular, and now I see it resurfacing. Okay. And why we do, we why we dress like this is because we were athletes. We were playing basketball. Mm-hmm. I was playing basketball at lunchtime. I was playing basketball after school. Like I was playing. So you would you bring your slippers? to relax so in between my, the cleats. So my, yeah, my yeah. basketball shoes that don't I touch do the, the ground thing. are in my backpack. Oh, so you're, it's like a race car. Like you don't drive it. You have to drive it on yeah, a trailer yeah, yeah, yeah. unless it's on the that's track. Right, yeah. That's right. Oh my God. Yeah. So you wear, this is so funny. So I'm, but I already had the socks ready to go. Like that's how you wear those double, you double your socks up when you're wearing your, your nice. That you way know. you can perform better snug. Yes. You're snug in Absolutely. the shoe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I know I'm, the science. So then I, all I'd have to <laughs> do is to kick my, kick my flip flops off. Then I could throw my, my, my Jordans on or whatever I was rocking at the time. I'll tell you what, I, I worked two summers to convince my mom to, to give me my first pair of Jordans. That was such a big deal. Yeah. It was a hundred and what was it? A hundred and like 30. 15 or yeah, 30? 100, yeah. yeah. 150, 130. And Which back then made was no like, sense. Bro, back yeah. then it it's, like, it's no like a million sense. dollars today. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sneaker, I can't believe I talked her into it. Sneakers were normally about 50 bucks for like normal shoes when we were kids. Like good yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, no, good ones. Good, good ones. Because yeah, you could buy a pair of sneakers yeah, good for Nikes, 15 Good Nikes then. would be $50, but it, Jordans were always two, three times retail of what everybody else was. The equivalent, so let's think about this. 30 years ago, if you were to buy 25 years ago, 30 years ago, if you bought shoes that were $120, that would be what today? 250 bucks, something like that. Which probably? is, yeah, which is, that's now it's what I do for for a pair of sneakers that I really, $250? Right. Oh, yeah, very yeah, normal. You're still in for that, basketball that shoes? World. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah. yeah no. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. Do they make you jump high? No, they're just, they're you're, just you're playing for the brand again. You're playing cool. for LeBron or yeah. KD or, you know, Kobe's name on them. So, no, you can so easily- here's how I got sold. You, you guys obviously were into sports and stuff, so it was about the like like the brand and, you know, oh, these are yeah, Jordans like or whatever. Yeah, like the Bo Jackson cross yeah. trainers. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The way I would buy shoes or if I begged my mom to buy shoes, it was because they had some kind of gimmick. So like the shoe had like a catapult thing in the heel that was so supposed you were to make sold you- like on Reebok pumps or like <laughs> yeah like something like deal. oh sh- I would what I would do is I'd go to the store spring loaded but yeah, yeah I remember those I'd Holy go to shit. the store and I'd grab the shoe and I'd look at the bottom where the sole is and I'd try and uh, figure out the technology and be like oh this has this has a honey <laughs> this has a honeycomb what, air pocket twenty one gigawatts yeah oh, I'm in so I tell my I I try and convince my mom so I'd be like oh this is the fucking honeycomb yeah what is that British Knights you know had the fucking whatever <laughs> oh, BK my God. Knights remember those things oh my God of course I remember those you did wear BK I, didn't wear them, I, I think I did. <laughs> Those are like the cool Payless shoes. Were yeah. they really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you shopped at Payless, they were like the coolest brand you I could have. I had no ever. idea that yeah, was yeah. that bad. Yeah, BK yeah. Knights and Pro Wings, dude. Damn it. Come on. Yeah. No, it's, I never wore Pro like Wings. right in there with Pumas no. at the time. Yeah. I like Pumas. I like Pumas a they lot. Made well, now a, they made it. Uh, they now didn't they became back. cool, but back then they were like really not cool. Were no, they really? No, they weren't. Same thing with BK Knights. My favorite pair of shoes of all time were these indoor soccer shoes from Lotto. L O T T O is the brand. It's a Italian brand. You're still into real like soccer. I had no idea. Yeah, I didn't stuff. care. I just yeah. bought them. They were light. And then the reason why I like them, you ready for this? Mm. I was playing uh, uh, two-hand touch football out in the front yard when I was a kid with my friends. And I caught this impossible pass and I totally put it on the shoes. Like, it's the fucking shoes. It's the shoes. It's the- so I wore the same shoes yeah. for like four or five pair. Like every time I buy a pair, I'll get the same ones. Sure. I ruined my first pair of Jordans like a dumb kid. I only had them for maybe, a, well, I had them for like maybe a month at, at best. Wow. And so I never wanted to take them off because I loved them so much. Uh-huh. 
And let's so like, great. I'm in, let me think here. I'm in like fourth or fifth grade. So it's one of the early on Jordans, right? Mm-hmm. So I wore them everywhere. And I remember a kid across the, the street. The black ones with the transparent like gel. Like what, what do they call it? The one, that was the ones I had. was the, the like one of the first ones. I believe my very first pair I ever owned were the fives or the sevens. And I don't, I have to look at the pictures to oh, remember. They the have difference. names and everything. Yeah. The, yeah, well, the yeah. order of what they got yeah, released, right? With so the silver tongue and. I remember those, and then like the little clip that would go over your uh, um, shoelaces, and all that shit so mattered. I freaking wore these. My n- next door neighbor came over. This was back when we lived in the in the country, kind of right where we had the horses and shit. And the kid asked me to come over and play knee football, and I was like, "Yeah, definitely." So we played knee football for like the next three four hours, with because that was something that what's was, knee football? You're on your knees. Yeah, it was something popular that we would do when you only had two or three friends to play. Like you can't play a full football game with like sure. two or three friends, right? So you play like short knee football. There's like an all time quarterback guy. There's a, there's offense and there's defense, and it's just straight in, in the grass. Uh, yeah, and yeah. you're on so your he's knees, just hiking you the ball, and you play on your knees. I never played it on my knees. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's just it, and you can do that in short field. So we would do that when our like our front lawn because it's really short. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we that played. sounds kind of fun. It is kind of. It was. But bro- you wore your shoes. Yeah, I wore my shoes, and it was like after a rainy day, so it was all we were playing. And we used to love to do this on a muddy day because when you mm-hmm. wait till it's like the ground's kind of soft. Soft and muddy, and when you tackle each other, you slide in the mud and stuff. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. so yeah, it's uh, a kid. mud football is huge. Yeah, when I was growing yeah. Up. So we loved mud football, and when there was just a, and was, we would if just a couple of us could get together, it was knee mud football. And I just destroyed those shoes. I can't. They oh, were no. just caked with mud all over them. Did was, you cry? <laughs> no, because I was just an idiot back then. I wasn't responsible. I convinced my grandma to buy the shoes for me. Uh, yeah. You know, this is part of like not being, you know, not being responsible or realizing like what a big deal that was. It was just me, my grandma saying, wow. spoiling me. And what was your what was your guys' first big purchase that you had saved up money for? Oh, I know what that is right away. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's crazy. Is Katrina. We just were talking about this just uh, literally last weekend or the weekend before because I went out and bought, I just had to replace the amp. So I still have the stereo system that I bought when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And it was my freshman year. I saved up all my money from the summer, from summer work, which was a couple thousand dollars, which was a big deal for me. I'd never seen that much money in my life Mm -hmm. before. You know, I'd never seen more than a couple hundred dollars at one time before. So to save up a couple thousand dollars was a really big deal. And uh, at that time I was into heavy into music um, in high school and I ran out and I bought uh, this home stereo system. It was an Onkyo turn- tuner. So anybody that knows like tuners, and I stuff, remember that, that. that's a really good brand. And it's like, and then I had DCM speakers, which are really good. So they I were, had the cassette and the fucking so this CD. Is, this is this is like top of the line shit. Th- these are my house speakers today still. Wow. Today. Same that's, ones. Yeah, brother. You go back. That's fucking when I was 15 years old. That's 30, quality, I'm man. 37 years old. Oh, man. yeah. That's that's crazy. I used it lasted to, that long. I took it to all the house parties. So I was the guy who provided the music for all the house because I had the baddest fucking speakers in high school. You have, give $1,000 speakers as a freshman in high school. Not a lot of kids could do that unless you're a rich kid. And even the rich kids' parents didn't normally do that. Yeah, they're not going to be frivolous. So I was the guy who threw my speakers in the back of the cars and we went to all this, the house parties and I provided. So that thing, these things have been, if you look on the outside, they're beat to fuck. Uh, but they all, next time you guys come over, I'll play them for you guys. You'll still shit yourself how good they Put it out, sound. huh? Oh, wow. Bro, wait till I play them for you guys. You'll yeah. be like, get the fuck mine out. Was a, um, mine was a truck. And so I worked like. Dude, I worked just the most bullshit jobs like for three <laughs> summers to fucking buy. And I and I drove around this piece of shit Honda car that was like um it was brown and the, and the top of it was like falling down and you know, I just used to make fun of it and I called it the raisin car and I used to still take girls out and like try and like go on dates and like <laughs> lure them in, like, hey, I have a car. Whoa. It's like a total <laughs> You lured them in. <laughs> not, not like creepy. Yeah, you know, like, that there's, did, there's a less that didn't creepy sound way creepy. That didn't sound to creepy. lure them in. Like, I can't like, open the door. Like, hey girl. Why yeah, am I, like, stuck? I have some candy in here. You look like you want to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like my line. Um but uh yes. Yeah, so, big spender. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. You know what you know a high school thing. Justin, did you have? I bet you had this in your truck. Did you steal the the um, Carl's Jr. number uh, from? Yep. Did you do that? Yeah, that was really popular. Yeah, I had a kids. 33 and a 36 because See? of my numbers. For, yeah. for oh all. my god, what the and, hell? I never and did I had this. a sticker, so we have stickers for our helmets, and so I had that in the corner because I had a big it has this big wraparound window, and so in the in the corner I had you know my sticker with my paw on it you know that was, represents i'm on the football team whatever and then i got like my number like little you know sticker like on top of that and uh it was funny because this truck 
was like three tone. It was like primer, <laughs> like a color, like reddish orange, in like some other like shitty like rust color. <laughs> exactly, dude. It had some chrome on it, you yeah. know. So like, what kind of truck four, was it? Uh, Fifty six uh, GMC. Oh, that's a legit short. St- yeah, it's yeah, fun. Step side and uh, had a four hundred. Pontiac, oh, dude, no power steering it, either, huh? Dude, no power steering, huge, steering, huge, but steering like a bus wheel. steering, like, wheel? just like a bus, yeah, yeah. And um, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made was I bought this, like, oh really no, you did the same billet, thing, my boy, did my boy put the GT the one, on, it, one on there? Oh my god, I, I used to get like the dude, you gotta, craziest workout you trying gotta to park cr- that thing. You gotta crank it like fifteen times. I remember. So That's check this you're out. Trying to be cool. Horrible, so how dude. funny? Yeah, is this? Totally how weird cool. is this? This is how how weird it is that we're all together. Okay, so what you just described is my best friend, my high school best friend, still my fr- one of my best friends today, Justin. Okay drove a 54 Chevy no that he, he changed the big wheel to the little GT. Yeah. And when we used to park, when we went to the, in our high school parking lot, when we got back from lunch, I used to have to help him crank the wheel to park <laughs> yeah, because, because you got to do it like 10 times and it's so like, stiff. No. Yeah. So he'd be like, we go to back and I'm sitting in the passenger seat and he grips, I grip, we grip, we grip. Oh, you have to help him? Yeah, because yeah. he has no power steering. And no. that, those, if you're not driving, that shit those ain't turning. And when you're using one of those wheels that are literally eight inches <laughs> diameter, dude, they're literally this big that's why they have the big bus wheels because there there is the leverage yes yeah, it's leverage. about the leverage it was all about the leverage and it's it's so funny because like it had so much power and torque so when i was at like a stoplight the entire truck was just lurching 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 forward <laughs> and like people would like be next to me and be like oh my god you know it sounded like parts were going to just fly off <laughs> you know and i would fucking <laughs> brah, <laughs> just <laughs> peel out every time i leave school and you know i got a ticket for it because we had this like cop that was just like you know he, he didn't like any you of saved us. up it's enough still- to you saved up enough to buy a truck huh do you remember yeah, how much it was that was it was five thousand oh, dollars so i did i bought one i bought a, i bought a brand well, new well i can see you doing because you're probably a tight ass you didn't have a lot of friends right. you didn't do sports I you didn't friends. spend a lot of money yeah. you're had, reading a lot inside I had a couple of... friends well i woke up <laughs> at five every morning and uh went and worked at this warehouse and then i also did like a second job is in construction and so yeah. i was just like I had a girlfriend for a brief minute because she was like, because t- she didn't see me ever. I was just fucking working, you know. And so she was like, "I'm done with you," mm. and dumped me. Could, but uh, yeah, it was just like I was on a mission. Yeah. Katrina yeah. and I, we were in the theaters last night, and we we watched Deadpool, and we were, uh, you know, the new the new Oak Ridge theaters now have like the recliners. Oh, aren't they great? Yeah, and she's like, Love I don't it. understand why they don't let you lift the divider up so we can like cuddle on these these recliners. And I'm like, well, think about it, hun. Like. They're probably not trying to incur. There's already high school, mostly high school kids probably coming here. You imagine <laughs> yeah. the amount of fooling around oh. you'd be doing in here if you could like lay it, oh. lay down, and oh, like the movies is a hand job city, right? That's yeah. what the movies are. So for. she starts she laughing and she, the she's like, "I didn't city. even think about that." She's like, "You know, that was my first kiss." So we start talking about first kisses and stuff like that and how that happened. And I was like, "No, dude." So so my my first purchase was a big purchase was a was a truck. Also, I bought a brand new. Toyota pickup truck that was base. Brand base. new? Brand new. Was this grand. like a... a <sighs> How old are Back you? Back to the Future. Remember when Marty had that black one that was badass? The yeah. By no, no. This was, was a str- this was a basic, like super base My best truck. One of my okay. other best friends, Kenny, who you've heard me talk about, who uh, was super frugal. He saved up 10 grand yeah. and bought a Ford Ranger. Yeah, wow. see, yeah so base- Ranger competed with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Those are the same. So I bought that, and then what I would do, because like you're making me you remember this, because you want to be, you're trying to be cool, so yeah. you do shit that's not like- You had accessories Yeah, it's stupid, shit. right? So yeah. I lowered it, I, and the way I lowered it is I don't want to spend money on a real cut lowering kit. I had them cut the springs, yep. <laughs> big tires. <laughs> Instead of putting like a good loud exhaust, I just had them cut the exhaust with- so That's right. And then I put uh, speakers in the back, and it's a small cabin, so I put a box, which meant I was up close to the steering wheel- <laughs> And every oh, every like bump boys. I hit in this truck was You're like smashing into was it. like giving me a, a herniated disc. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I fucking look cool in my in my, yeah. my slam truck that I named Toto. That was the name of my truck. You had a name of your truck. Before, you didn't name your car. Yeah. No, I didn't. You didn't name your car. No, that's kind uh, of a chick thing to do. No, it's not. 
Uh, I named mine. Girls piece. don't give a shit about yeah. cars. No, that's not true. That's why they name them. They're they don't like, name. Yeah, they, to, to, make own... it, to make it cute. <laughs> no, yeah. you Did name... you name any of yours? Uh, maybe just one. I See? Named... Uh, Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> He's going to be on my side. Look at this. <laughs> He's going to be on the South team. Like, Damn it. I had to make fun of it. Yeah. I used to I have like, Oh, shit. You know, here it comes. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. It was a Jeep. I had a black Jeep and I called it Vader. So there you go. Of course. That's hella nerdy, dude. Of course. That's hella nerdy, dude. I went through his, a phase. Uh, Star Wars, dude. Come on. You named your vehicle after Star Wars gear, dude. Of course I did. Uh, that's I why did. we all work, dude. Yeah. Justin's got a little bit of the athletic cool side in him. That's why we connect really well. Yeah, but he's yeah. also still got some of that nerdy I shit do. in him. I, I, that's, connect I do you. connect on that level. I don't like to admit it all the time. <laughs> But I mean, my brother was like uber nerd, you know, and so I had to like relate somehow, just just to keep the peace. You can that's, talk to you hang out. So I played hilarious. Risk with him and shit. And Risk, you know what I mean? like, how nerdy oh is that? God, do, you, do you remember you guys' first kiss? First, first kiss? kiss? Yeah, I do. You do. I do remember yeah. my first kiss, yes. like real one, vividly. Not like, not no, like, like the, a like a tongue and everything. Yeah, yeah, that. Yep, one. yep. No, I, I, it was in how old was I? I want to say was it sixth or seventh grade? I'm trying oh, to remember. Yeah, what it was. Early, seventh grade. It was oh, in seventh yeah. grade. And uh, I was in band, so I, I, I you know, obviously. Wait, you were in band? Yes, I had the. Tr- I played the trumpet all the way up. That okay? No, I was in band too. How did you make it out in alive thir- in third grade, though? You know, here's the thing about me: I, nobody ever picked on me because I was extremely assertive. Yeah. So, like, if you made the mistake of thinking you could pick on me, then you were yeah. gonna get. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. even th- you were also tough too for a scrawny kid. That's right? what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 I was yeah, assertive, yeah. so yeah. I, I would stand up for myself. So yeah. anyway, I know. In so in band, they had the the room for the equipment. And mm-hmm. there was this girl, Claudia. Fuck, hopefully she's not listening. Who <laughs> was she in band also? She was also in band. What the instrument? Actually, no, she wasn't in band. She wasn't in band. The bassoon? No, no, she the wasn't flute. in band. Yeah. She she wasn't in band at all. But but the, here's why the band story is important. Skin because the I had access to the instrument room, and that was the perfect place to do whatever. Why you did you have do. access? Were you that much of an ass kisser with your teacher? No, you got access. Everybody to who played, everybody who played an instrument oh, okay. could go in there. Okay, well, I, I, I wasn't like, oh, I like a special uh, room. That yeah, like, wait, wait, wait. there was no special. Were you like, the kid that like rolled out the projector? No, okay, no, good. never. All right, all right <laughs> so, good. All right, good. So anyway, so uh, so this girl Claudia, who was known for making out with whoever, because she had great boobs, probably. She was not. She had big and boobs. This is why I apologize. Did she have big boobs or what? No, wow. she wasn't attractive at all. Oh, she. Oh, no. no. Oh, God. No, no, I hope no, she's no, not. Was this like a I little know, friend sorry. deal you guys made? No, it's like? because I, I knew I would be able to make out with her. Like, oh, it was like practice. That was her thing. Like, yeah. she would make out with. Most people use their cousin or someone like yeah. that. You found somebody. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, I want to make out really Most bad. Most people use their cousin? Yeah, kissing cousins. What the fuck? You never heard that before? Yes, I have, but we don't need to talk about that. I didn't even know that was an actual Hold thing. on a second. We'll get to your first <laughs> yeah, kiss yeah, yeah, yeah. in a second, Adam. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Where is this going? And I'm the Sicilian one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, so I so I I took her in the band room and I took one of the band nerds, <laughs> one of my one of the kids in my class, oh and my I made God. him stand guard at the door and I said, knock on the door if someone comes by. And so we went in that band room and made out and I felt under her shirt. Nice. Oh, you did both. Wow, you, you went for like, oh, both dude. things. Let me tell you was, something, bro. You guys think I'm... You guys, a lot of pent up like... You, you guys joke around about me being filthy, all that stuff. I was terrible at a young age. <laughs> My kid, my son, who's what do you think that was? Do you think you were introduced to something early on, or did you think that maybe your parents kept you in the room while they're having sex and you just don't remember? Or I know, like I'm yeah. just a I'm, <laughs> you think like the cri- noises. The, cri- the crib was in there yeah. all the way to like four. Actually, <laughs> 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 yeah. he's like, I have no idea why I'm this weird yeah. freak. I had it in me since like I was grade. A, I was a horny Feel the rhythm. I was into girls. Do you ever try to figure early. out where it came from? Why how, why I was so horny? Yeah, yeah. Like if I don't know, dude. Like I started. I mean, I was into girls really early. I had girlfriends in second and third grade, and I try and kiss them and stuff but by the but man i was yeah i was i was going at it with, with myself pretty early on wow if you know what i mean i was a horny fu- motherfucker for sure so <laughs> i had i had my hands under her shirt and i was Literally. touching her whatever and i got the i got the you you remember this when you were a kid you get the wet spot you get so horny you get fucking yeah, yeah you yeah, produce yeah, a bunch yeah, yeah that was little, it little pre-paste. that was me yeah. seventh grade and the, you know what sucks about this story my my boy my son just finished seventh grade going into eighth. Oh, yeah, it's going and on. And he is not like that at all. At least, or he's tricked the fuck out of me. He's totally got me fooled. Yeah, well, he's, he's But he's a super innocent kid. He hasn't told you anything. He's a very innocent kid. Because that was me. You, I was a filthy man. I didn't tell yeah. my parents anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say, do you feel like you were somebody who was an innocent kid or came off innocent when you were? I mean, you well, know how bad you well, were. Well, my but. parents didn't talk about it. See, I, I try to keep open communication with my kids. You're right. Who knows? He might be. 
Yeah. He might you be the same set way. What happens sometimes in this? I mean, he's got the mustache even and when, everything even going when, on. Even so. when parents are like open, yeah. sometimes they, the kids don't want to talk. Like, God, my dad always is he's so open about stuff, and I don't want to talk to him about it, yeah. so they don't share. You know what I'm saying? That's also a possibility. I've oh, seen bro. that. You know? Seventh and eighth yeah. grade, God forbid my parents left me home for any period of time. Right. Yeah. I was all over the house. That's what I was doing the whole time. Yeah. Uh, Maybe set some booby traps wow. and try and figure it out. Huh? Wow. Set some booby traps. Some literal ones? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Pictures yeah. of boobs? Yeah, yeah. See if it, see Dude, if you knew how to see French and everything. Thing, Cause like the first time I French kissed, it was like <laughs> French. It was like this weird. I've like, used to be referred girl, to as Frenching in yeah, such a long time. Yeah, you Frenched. Like, dude, this girl made like her tongue into almost like a tongue burrito, and just like put it in. And I was like, what is this? And I was like trying to move it around. Do I bite it? Yeah, yeah. It, it almost, it almost like ruined it for me. Where I didn't like, I didn't know how if that was you? like how you did it. How old were you? I was in fourth grade. Whoa, you French kissed in fourth grade? Yeah. Whoa, dude, you're way Is that, What? Yeah, dude, I was I was in seventh grade. I, didn't I, have was, sex I was I was like, you I was, know, I was, like I, eighteen or something. So. I was eighth going into my, my freshman year of high school. Oh yeah, you were repressed. Was, it was summer. You were repressed. Sure. <laughs> it was repressed. Yeah. Yeah. You're so yeah. fucking bad. I was I was a late bloomer, no doubt. Oh, but, I was Frenching. So I, like, I mean, I was I, on a mission. After I kiss that. girls. I kiss girls all at fourth grade. So my first real kiss, where I kissed a girl. But even at that time, like no tongue though. Yeah, no tongue, and you you don't even know what you're doing. You're probably at that age. You're like you're you're mimicking what you see on TV or That's whatever. What it was. Right. Like yeah. it wasn't until the eighth grade. Like, did I want to kiss her? You know what I'm saying? Where it was uh-huh. just like you know the nervousness, and it's like that. And then after you do it one time, I want to do it again. Like that was. Uh, uh, That's yeah. when that started to kick in for me. And I remember the girl, her name was Lisa Buell. God, that's when making out was so, like, so hot. Can you, yeah, As an how, adult, how, how like, weird is that when yeah. you're, like, making out? Like, you literally have, you devote time. Like, you have, like, Hours 20 just minutes. To make out. You have an hour oh, no, this was like of a, just making That's all you did. And it's like, ew. Mine was, <laughs> <laughs> mine was a build-up a build up for, like, a week. That's so gross. A week of planning. Like, okay, you know, come over to my house on Friday. We're and just going to make out. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was a total plan of, like, where the parents will be, where we'll, we'll go and how hang on and even like re- leading up to it I remember like walking in her field this is so crazy I haven't thought about this memory in so long I remember walking at her house she had property right so she had a couple acres and, and I remember walking her property it was like the, the sun was almost all the way down so it's getting dark and we're like holding hands like just walking out in the field, right? And like, I know why I'm here. Nervous as Yeah, nervous. It like took like 45 minutes of walking before, you know, finally muster up whatever. I wish I remember like okay. what I said or what I did to, do to get it going. And then once it happens, it was It's like, so funny how different you are as a grown man. Oh, you know, you show up like, we're yeah. going to do this or not? He's like, I got did shit you to talk do. to her ahead of time, your first kiss? I, we, we like had a pact. Like, oh, we're going to do this. No, like, so what happens was, or at least for us, what happened was, you know, we, we each had our, our, you know, she had her girlfriends, I had my guy friends and we were all collective friends. Right, yeah, and my friends are talking to her friends yeah. about setting the, this shit up, setting it up. You know what I'm saying? It's like yes. you know, Adam's got he gets off school at three o'clock, and then you know, blah blah blah. He'll come over to your house and this and that, like cool. And then my buddies are coming back to me like, hey, dude, she's down. She said she's cool. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like she's ready. Everything's go. Three can you get over bro. there? Three and you o'clock. know, and part of you is like, fuck, man, yeah. I could I, I could actually do this. You know, this could happen. Yeah. Like you know, you're nervous, nerve. as fuck. but then you want to back out because you're scared. Of course, of course you do. But then you got to do it, right? So that was kind of like the the first like. Kiss, and then you were—you just reminded me of something that was really funny that we used to do. This is fuck. Then my buddy Eric coming over, and I know my boy Eric follows me on IG. I don't know if he listens to the show. Eric Ackerman's house was the house to go over to when we were in high, freshman year of high school because his parents were hell. He had a huge house, and his parents uh, had they, their upstairs was the master, and they used to go up there, lock themselves in the room, and they'd stay up there all night, and we could kind of hang out downstairs in the major room. And he had this huge big screen TV back then, and so. All of us that were in high school that had cup that were in couples, so there'd be like eight couples. You know, all of us were friends. You know, we'd all go over there and watch movies, and it was all just to make out. The sure. entire time. you put the movie on, everybody has this is blank- how orgy started. Everybody has blankets <laughs> on. You know, you've got the love seat over there, you've got the couch over there, you're on the floor over there, you're on the floor there, and we're all got blankets. Yeah. We're all watching a movie, quote unquote. Yes. And as soon as the, the fucking credits aren't even done, like opening the movie, there's. Oh, you just he could hear everybody and then and then the girls go one way the guys go another way talk all, about it. all the boys talk about dude 
she got she let me go into her bra, bro. She let yeah. me go into her bra too. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like oh, dude, you know, going back and forth, like oh, my other buddy, like fuck, bro. Dude, I remember dude. I was at this party, right? And so this this is accelerating that. So that that happened for a couple of years, right? And then like we're in in. And I think it was freshman in high school and we're at this party and everybody's starting to do that same thing. Right. And, uh, you know, there was sleeping bags. All, everybody's just doing Whoa. their own thing. A sleepover. Yeah. It was a sleepover. Oh, of course so, some progressed. Shit's gonna go down. so, <laughs> so one of my boys, he, he like, this is the first time ever. Right. First time. And he gets laid like that for night. him or you for him. Okay. For him, 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 he actually had sex. He actually had sex. Like it was behind my head. How old are you? What grade? Oh are you? my God. <laughs> I didn't what, know what's going on. What grade, what grade are you? In? So it was like, we were like freshmen. It was like, yeah. Wow. I think it was eighth grade or freshman. Yeah. And so he was like, that's the, early. The to first experience that. It was the first in our group of friends, you know? And so it was so weird. Cause I, like I, I knew something was else was going on. It he's the man. Just making out. Too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, he's like, yeah, he was the first, you know, first to market. Dude, and, I, uh, yeah. And it was just like, I was like, I, I, was, I couldn't believe it was going on behind me. Dude. Do you guys remember the first time you got a hand job? Cause that's usually the next progression, right? I yeah. do. There was, I, so I share this. I'll the- tell you my story. I'll tell you. So I was dating this girl in fre- summertime going into freshman year. So it's after eighth grade. Going into high school, I'm dating this girl, Anne Marie. Not going to say her last her last name because she still lives in the area. But anyway, first girlfriend, and yeah. she was experienced. I'll say so. She actually had done. That's not what we called them when we were in high school, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah, no, no. <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, she was experienced. We call them friendly. Yeah. So, so we. I used to walk my. And remember, this is the summer that I dislocated my knee. So I dislocated my knee, and I'd wear this long brace that wouldn't allow my leg to, to bend. Yeah. So I walked like a, like a fucking idiot. Yeah, like doo-doo, hobbling. Doo-doo. I used to walk. Her house was probably a good three miles from my house. I'd walk all the way to her house, hobbling on one leg, which is why my left calf is still bigger than my right, because I had to push off. Walk all the way to her house so we could make out. The third time I walk over there to make, and I'm perfectly content at that age. Like I'm making out. I'm fucking... This is like the hottest thing I've ever done in my life. We're making out, and she goes and grabs my hog. Just Damn. grab, yeah, grabs onto it, and she yeah. starts rubbing it through my pants, and I'm losing my mind. <laughs> I'm, you, because you know, here's the deal: when you're that, age, I wish it uh, felt like that still to this day. I know, yeah, right? I, like, I wish it. I wish it, it made my literally seat. was like magical confetti that just came out. <laughs> yeah. It was just like whoa. Yeah, you can you can grab me through my pants now, anybody, and I'd be like, well, I'm yeah. like, whatever. I mean, did you know? Good. Did you know to reciprocate? Because I certainly didn't. Well, all I was doing was I, I had my arm around, quivering. No, I had my arm <laughs> yeah. around her. Yeah, right. I had my arm around her, and I was just letting her do it. Like, oh uh, yes, uh, yeah. Over my pants, and it's so you're so sensitive at that age, and so like ridiculously <laughs> horny. You basically can finish in that position, but oh no, she went and unzipped, and did the whole. Oh wow! Yes, wow. the whole hand job, and wow. it was the greatest summer of my life. She's changed because I would go there, and that's what I would so, do. So I don't know if I've shared this on the show or not. I know I I think I've told you guys before. I have this really funny thing where, when I get sick, I could be on my deathbed, sick or cold, doesn't matter how I. If I feel miserable, I get horny, mm-hmm. and I believe that it stems back to this. Story. Maybe you get sick all the time because Katrina uh, no inoculates you. <laughs> 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 but she's trying to get some. I was like, I have a terrible abuse system. I always get sick. Maybe well, I think you're on to something, she's, man. she's got like a Petri dish. She's like, uh, I'm making your sandwich, Adam. Yeah, yeah. You know, little strep throat in there. You know? oh, I should look back to see where, where, where was going on in our relationship at that time. That's true. Or not. That's hilarious. But I, so I think that this stems from this story. And I, so when I was a kid uh, in high school, my parents would let me lock my bedroom door if it's just me in the bedroom, right? So that, they respected that part of mm-hmm. my privacy. It's like if you're a 15 year old boy and you're in your room by yourself, yeah, it's like, jack off time. Yeah, right. So they, <laughs> I, I don't know why they do it. Then I just obviously that's probably why sure. they just let me have my privacy. So I would lock my door at night before I went to bed and stuff like that. Well, my girlfriend in high school, she was a little bit older than I was, so she had her license before. She used to drive over really early in the morning, and my front window was... Oh, shit. This it, is she, great. My front window was right at the front door, so she could. She used to climb into my room at 4 or 5 o'clock in, in the morning and stay with me till we went to basically went to school. And, you know, that, that we would be making out or doing whatever shit in, in the early morning like that. But th- at this time, I'm really innocent. Like So this is me starting to progress to my first hand job. 
And I remember she came over to come. It's dry humping up until this point. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, she heavy petting. She, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. She tells me uh, I'm sick. I'm sick at this time, and she's gonna come over and she's gonna bring me like some sprite and whatever. And so she's sneaking into my room. She comes in my room and she, and I'm laying there and I'm sick. And she starts kind of rubbing my chest, and, those, and the next thing you know, she's rubbing my shit, right? <laughs> and I remember just, like, oh! I remember, I remember going from feeling the worst I felt being sick to probably one of the best feelings I've ever felt in my life up yeah. until that point, right? Like literally up to that point, nothing has ever felt so good on my body than another woman rubbing your dick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, up right. at this point, only I have experienced this with myself, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is just new territory for me. And after I'm I'm feeling miserable, then she and then I'm feeling amazing while she's doing it. I, for, I think I forever have attached that to it when I'm imprinted sick. Imprinted on your brain, yeah, yes. dude. You, yeah, like for me, it was. I told you guys this story already, but like I didn't even like jack off until like after this happened. So like, <laughs> what? Yes, like so the, my fr- when I had a girlfriend, she came over and. You know, we we were downstairs. Wait a second, wait, 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 you had a chick teach you how to jerk off? Is what you're saying? Yes. Wow. Oh my god. Yes. Usually well, it's the other way around. No, you, I just you didn't have even to teach think, a girl. I didn't even think to do it because I was already having like you know, I was making a mess. You know, <laughs> what? I, you know what I'm saying? What you were you were you a wet like, dream kid? I was a wet dream. Of guy. course oh. he was. He wasn't letting it out. Yeah. Oh shit. See, yeah, never, which I, is more embarrassing. I never yeah. I it, always wanted a wet dream. I never had oh, one. Never had you one. Know why? No, you we didn't. were jerking off too much. We didn't let it build up, Adam. Listen. <laughs> you didn't want to because your mom has to clean those sheets. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, ugh. Yeah. like Do you oh. think you think the mom knew for sure? Of course. Come on, dude. Well, I don't know. I don't know what you're I don't you have to do you have to talk That's to a me. lot, man. I was like gonna it, say you, yeah, you gotta tell me about this. I've I never mean, experienced it. It's so. more than just a snail trail. Oh, you know my, I mean? oh wow. So it's, you it's a, so when you it's have a, a wet, glittery pond. See now being you somebody will. somebody who has never had a wet dream, I assume that the the kids that had wet dreams it was yeah. what they called like pre ejaculation, where they just a little bit came no, out. You actually, no, 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 you, you actually go bust full the nut. Bore. I used to have the craziest dreams. Dude. Wow! Oh, I was, wish I could have. See, one that's of the those. thing. It, that was fantastic. Like I was cool with that. How often it was, were, it was the cleaner hey, house in the how, morning? I'm like ah. How often were you having to clean the sheets? Oh my god! Like all the time. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was <laughs> like more than once a week. Yeah. Well, mm, yeah, more than once a week. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and I try and hide it, and I'd already try and take it and put it in the laundry. You're like, it's like like two weeks in, and you're. You start off your bed, you're all sprawled yeah, out. Yeah. Then by by week two, you're like in this little tiny corner. Oh you're my because you don't want to fucking let yeah. your mom clean the sheets. So he's like, <laughs> yeah. he's trying not to sleep on all the cum stains all over the yeah. place. So he's like in the corner I used of the bed. I just wear extra clothes. You know, yeah. Sometimes. Why are you going to bed in the diaper, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would have been start being proactive so, and lay like a blanket or lay like a uh, like a it towel wasn't down for that long. So I had a girlfriend <laughs> that actually took care of this. For so me. she gave you your first hand. That's the actually you didn't get your first hand job from from a girl. That was your first hand job. Period. Period. Whoa, that must have it been. It was like, like that must have been a, a mind altering, consciousness expanding experience. Bro, way more than fireworks. Let's just say it was like an atom bomb went off wow. in my crotch. <laughs> How old are you? Twenty two. <laughs> <laughs> nice dude no i was like i was probably like 12 i want to say 13 13 oh, that's, that's young that's 13. not bad 13 yeah, dude, yeah, i'm 15 bad. when i'm the first time but i had already figured it out myself though no before. i was yeah, 13 because yeah. it was it was seventh grade yeah oh my god so. that's terrible i have a seventh grader yeah i think about this like shit I said, i'm like what I, the fuck were we french doing? kissing well who does the laundry are you doing the laundry uh, or jessica doing the laundry? no it's good i do the laundry you see yeah. no, nothing no no we're good you didn't you you don't take a black light to it ever uh you try the black i don't want to know dude i mean it's it's probably happening who knows yeah. you know what i mean i think i see i don't know if i'm a dad you guys have boys you know what i'm saying i kind of want to know were you going to have a conversation with your son? Maybe. <laughs> what you jerking off to, son? Yeah. <laughs> what are the kids into these days? Yeah, you're, 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 you're like, well, that's weird. We're, we have a lot in common, boy. Yeah, right. I can tell you my son. Really? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what that's you, what I'm into. Uh, right, right. Would you, that would not trip you out of his porn uh, His porn searches are exactly oh the same? God. Oh, my God. Uh, Especially that, with your twisted ass mind? That, I'm not that twisted. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, bro. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Relax. Relax. Like, Donkey, yeah. like no, my spot. God. God. <laughs> but that's uh, God. Those were the days, that huh? Was, that was a crazy. That's time. why, and you know what's funny when you're that age, when you're that young, and this is why I made a comment on a few episodes ago that Jessica got me and her got in this debate over, because I said boys get crushed, we get emotionally crushed by girls, and here's why. <clears throat> For sure, guys get orgasms from from girls way before guys give girls orgasms. Girls don't even have to give, they don't even know how to give themselves an orgasm until much later, right? Typically, not always, but typically. 
So when a girl does that to you, you instantly fall in love with her. You don't even know what's going on. You're just like, I love this girl. Yeah. And then like, they break up with you, and it's devastating. It's, so, I w- I would, it's the worst. I, I would say that- Did you, I bet you fell in love with her. I Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. I would say that, or what you think is love at that age, right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think- Super infatuated. I think that boys tend to get their hearts broken in high school more, and I think college- and up, I think women tend sure, to be. I think sure, it kind of, sure. the roles kind of reverse. I think early er, on. That's what I'm saying. Early, early, early heartbreak. Early on. Yeah. I, you know, it kind of goes full circle again after that, too. I think women, it's like we just keep shift, the power shifts back and forth, you know, through it, as you age, right? Well, the good news like, is, is, is as men in getting older, I, I, it finishes off with guys kind of having that, that power a little bit. It really does. It's true. Especially if you get really old. Well, if you like talk, I used to train to wait it out. Well, I used to train a lot of uh advanced age people and they would they would some of them lived in these homes for the elderly. Do you know what a stud men are in these places? Because there are no men, they're all dead. Well, do you So it's all women in there. <laughs> and there no, no to joke. I went to one I went to one to visit my 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 client um Kim. So I went to go visit her because she lived in this in one of these homes. She was eighty three years old. Yeah. And it was all women there because Men don't live as long as women do, and so right. I would. I met all these women, and then I saw this, decre- <laughs> this decrepit old guy with a walker. Yeah, and she's and, and he's she's, just slain ass. And she used to tell, <laughs> she used to tell me about this guy, tell him how he's the stud of the house. Yeah, and I'm like that guy, and she's like, "There's no other men, Sal." <laughs> she goes, "At my age, if thank they, God for Viagra." She's like, "They just have to be alive. Yeah, right. They're super desirable." Yeah. I was like, "Oh shit!" So if we wait long enough. Yeah. We get the power. Yeah, <laughs> you just gotta wait. We get it the out. power. Uh, was that the? What was the first time you got your heart just smashed? That was it for that. That girl. That girl did that, it. That same girl. Well, we dated yeah. all through high school, right? Oh, so, she's the one that made you cry in your room. That you yes, told us about. yes. The, probably the only t- only time. I think yeah, it, mine actually was in college though. But I was it was a freshman. Uh, is that the one? Fr- yeah. Is that the one where you cried in the shower? Yeah, just stained. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a song. He's got a oh. song that he can remember that he it's cried a, to. It's a very hey, vivid moment. Please, I don't. I didn't do it very often. Please remind yeah. me to fucking trigger that one day when we're all driving together. Yeah. Throw some stained on. Like when the car get, <laughs> car gets all quiet, then I'll say, "Just turn it on, see if Justin gets all emotional." I just picture Justin crying oh, in the shower because you can. You look so weird. You know what I see him doing? I see him actually yeah. singing along. That's what I see. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't know if I actually saw, break I, the cycle and shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I did. I do. I, I yeah, see it, dude. I might have. Just, Was it? Like in between, just choking it back. Did you, you know? sob? You know, it started out as like a cry, like oh god, like what was me? And then it was like, yeah, no, let's go into this. Do you remember? Yeah. When, Do you remember when it really start coming down? I, let's I'm go pretty, into this. I'm pretty sure I made noises. You know, oh I, I, like I regret forever if anybody heard oh, it. Oh man, uh, I remember. I used to like. I remember getting my heart broken and like laying in bed and staring at the ceiling and like listening to music for like. Eight ten hours in a day, just straight. Wow, yes. yeah, just, that sucks. Yeah, just straight depressed music. Like that was, you know, I think at that age when you when you when you experience so much in such a short window, like when you have never done anything physically with the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever, and you start to experience all these sexual experiences with the same person, like, yeah, think about that. How many how many first times were with that first girl, right? That first girl, first kiss, first you're, hand you're job, sharing, first you're sharing you're sharing a very private, very personal private. thing. Yeah, it's, you bond over both it. people the are probably really nerd. Life. Right, right. Yeah. So you you un, and unbelievably bond really really tight. So I think, and then I think that many people mistake that feeling for love. Totally. You know, they mistake that that and and there's some truth to that that probably I think is, it is love. That there's there is I think you're in love. I think you're just for that you're, moment. You're reaching your full capacity of what you understand. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like as you become more wise, as you get older, as you learn yourself a little more, your capacity for what it means to be in love grows. So do you think that you know or do you saying? think cuz mm-hmm. at that age, let's be honest with ourselves that much of us are and you got to remember this. Man. I mean, I couldn't I remember getting in fights with my girlfriend in high school, right? Like arguments back and forth. Because all I want, once we started to fool around, all, that's all you I, want to do. That's, I did not want to do anything else. Yeah. You know what? And me, I used to get, I would be it. so mad me about too. it. Like if we wouldn't, just, I let's didn't just do that and then we could go do whatever else you want to do. I'll I hold hands, understand. I'll I watch movies, I'll, I'll do, do all that stuff, but <laughs> this. Right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't understand I why they didn't like want to do that yeah. all the time. I was like, this is the this is the best part of being together. Yeah. Let's just do this all the time. Right, right. So I, I think that, I don't know, I would argue that it's not love. I think it's, I think it's lust mistakenly placed as 
as love. Yeah. Um, because it feels like that at that time because you're experiencing so many feelings you've never felt in your life before mm -hmm. and desires you've never felt before. And then that and boy, can, when they take that for, away from you, that is withdrawal. Oh, yeah. yeah. All so, of a sudden, so that so that is, feeling like can drug. be misconstrued as what what some people describe love as. And so I think many young people that their first major experiences and you know some people don't experience that later or maybe there's certain things that you're more vulnerable in other than sexual experiences that you open yourself up later in a relationship that's typically mm -hmm. what happens to Dude, us right i had yeah. i had an opportunity in, in eighth grade i think it was eighth grade eighth grade to have a a threesome now i don't know if it would have gone all the way although i think it would have because i know these girls but for sure, they both openly. We used to get. Remember three way phone calls? You guys remember that? Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. I used to get on three way phone calls with. <laughs> these, such a big deal when it came out. I used to talk to with two these girls two girls, and, and they were best friends. And you know, one of them was this black girl, very attractive, and this other one was this Asian girl, also very attractive. <laughs> And so we used wow. to be. I know, know what you know what your searches right away, right? What your what searches are looking like. Yeah. 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 So yeah. and so and we were just, and we were all friends, and we'd get on these three way phone calls. And of course, at that age in eighth grade, ninety nine percent of the conversation is going to revolve around sex and you know all these filthy conversations. So we used to talk about sex. We talk about masturbation. They talk about how they had sex and this and that. And we'd get all I'd get all horny over the phone. And so they invited me to come over to one of the girls' house so we could all fool around. That was literally the plan. And I was intimidated as fuck. I you never really scared. I did not go. Yeah. I was I was too scared. But definitely regret that. I'm trying, a lot of <laughs> factors there. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if I didn't, if there was something that I backed out of because I was so scared. I definitely remember times, many things that I did experience mm. that I was scared going in. But again, this probably goes back to my same theme or story that I always talk about being fearless or whatever from all stemming all the way to like seven years old. I think that there were very few things in my life that it, just because I was scared, it kept me from doing mm -hmm. something. I think I, I think I went after almost, yeah, I'm trying to think of a time where I was like, oh, well, God. I know my, like, so I was on a bus and we were going to like summer camp, you know, for something or whatever. And, um, we picked up like another group. And so this other group came in and there was like the most attractive, beautiful, gorgeous girl I've ever seen. You know, I was just like insanely intimidated immediately. And she sat right next to me. Oh. And then she kept looking over and she's like, hi. And my name is, I was like, hi. And then I just like kind of turned away. Yeah, wow. like I was such a fucking pussy, dude. You know what? I'm I was gonna, so scared. Oh, you're still hold on a second. Yeah. You're still like thinking back to that. Like, what what could have happened? <laughs> I should have said something. No, it's just like it's crazy. Like, yeah, I, it's true. I, you you know, just like, reminded. There's me. There's a bunch of those though that I I totally just. I, you're scared. I, I was scared, and oh. I thought that I wasn't. I don't know. I guess you know part of it. It's confidence. Like you you build this confidence about yourself to be like, yes, I can talk to her. And, oh. You know, she's. But I was like, she's way out of my league, dude. dude what I am was, I doing? I was a lot of talk. I've always been a big mouth. So I was always a lot of talk. And I could always, I would get really good at getting girls to talk about doing those things. But then when it got to the point where <laughs> we're about to do this thing, I would get intimidated many times up until I got, you know, a little bit older. But yeah, at that age, I was fucking scared, man. Especially <laughs> with two girls, two girls on the phone come over. We're both going to mess around with you. Wow. God damn it. Wow. Yeah. I so can't you'd rather just masturbate about that huh? happening, right? I, you're, you didn't want to actually go through No, that. I think at that, I at, at that age, yeah. I think you're scared of the girl seeing you naked or seeing like No, all it that. wasn't even that. It's just, oh, really? I don't know what to do. Like, two girls? He's like, how do I handle this? Yeah, like, what am I going to do? Oh, like, see, what I are we going to do? I had a different attitude. I was like, yeah. oh, I could learn. Show me. <laughs> <laughs> I was that guy for sure. Yeah, I, so I, the older women, dude. Radical sense. honesty has been a part yeah. of my life, even at a young age, man. I don't know what I'm doing, but I would love for you girls to show me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. How you do know, I do this? Where do I go? I'll tell you something. You just reminded me of that. I was like, oh man, I'm a bad human for this, and I'm totally gonna freak out every parent that sends their kid off to church camp yeah. because I wasn't. Oh, oh I, come on, church camps with everybody, oh, dude. I remember out with everybody at church. Yes, camp. and I re I remember riding the bus with my girlfriend to church camp and fooling around on the bus to church camp and thinking to myself, looking back now, like, oh, my, yeah. how many parents are like sending their kids off for like, oh, yeah, thinking, this, yeah. this is going to be great for them. And like all the kids are like, hell yes, I cannot wow. wait to go to and church camp. And that's where camp. you signed your purity card yes, and all that. Here's, oh, the, so here's why that's so bullshit. So conflicted it's right there. It's so bullshit because you sign that card. I never did that, right? But I knew people that did. You would sign that card and you would do... I had a I had a, a family member. I already know where you're going, and I, I can tell a you female, I was that kid. I had a female family member that mm -hmm. went on vacation to Italy, 
and she wanted to stay a virgin, so all she did was anal sex the whole right, time when she was right. over there. It's like, you know, that's actually the second step. Typically, you have <laughs> normal sex God first. God bless you. And then you go to that, you know what I mean? <laughs> That was really cool. Like, but I'm still a virgin. Yeah. Nah, kind of not. You're that's but that's not, how like uh, that's how a kid's brain a, a virgin, kid's brain a works when they're when they're getting this message that you know you it's you know it's evil. Or I'm it's a virgin. Wrong. I just give blowjobs. Right. right. So then you're like you're 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 hanging on. Well, technically, I'm not really having. You look at all the t- okay. Well, so we could do this, but not that type of deal. It's like it yeah. defeats. Oh, them. I know you were one of those. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure you did every single thing yeah. possible. Where are yeah. The besides lines? vaginal. Now, sex. now I will say. Okay, so I know we're knocking it for what's bad. Now, what it did for me. Okay, and I think made you it's good at everything really else. Really creative it, ways to do things. It served me yeah. very well as far as. I mean, we just had sex with Emily. We talked to, and she talks about the importance of foreplay and how important that is for uh, a female and that was something that i had to master because i couldn't do i couldn't have right. sex but in my eyes i was okay to do everything else so up until 20 years old all of the i did a lot of stuff that all of my friends didn't do even though my friends were having sex so i had friends that were having sex yeah. but i would argue that i was they pretty, jumped the gun i was more experienced with the stuff that i was doing and experimenting okay. with and the, so I think that as much as it, it's good it's, training ground, right? It did, it did, yeah. sir. It did, did serve me. So it wasn't a, such a bad thing at all. The the the, right. the drive at that age is so un was so unbearable. It was so strong. Are you imagine having that kind of drive as a man, like as a grown oh, man. Yikes! You you wouldn't have a job. No, I. You know what I mean? <laughs> You'd be like a bum. You know what I mean? You wouldn't be yeah. able to do anything because I think I, I wanted beca- to just run through walls. I, th- I think I became a much. <laughs> Oh my god! Dick first. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I was just like full of testosterone. Of course dude. you were. You're oh. having all these wet dreams because you didn't release Fuck. yourself. Yeah, it was a nightmare. It's a funny hormone, dude. I tell you what, because I think that I, I when even when I notice my personality the way it's changed, because I've obviously noticed a lot of difference in me in the last three to five year window. If you talk about my hormone levels and stuff, and when I have lower testosterone or, and or higher estrogen, like it's very a- apparent to me in my relationship. I'm way more. You're probably more communicative. Oh, very. <laughs> but I'm way more patient. I'm sensitive. Like <laughs> I buy gifts. Yeah, <laughs> no, totally. So I see. And so I, I remember that, that transition from being like feeling like, God, am I ever going to stop this? Like feeling as a 17 year old boy where I just literally want to just have sex or fool around all the time. Like, I remember that change, and I actually remember feeling a, I liked that I wasn't like that anymore. I was like, "Oh, thank God, yeah. I can get that thought out of my mind." Because before yeah. it was, I remember trying, like I remember like literally oh, yeah. crying. It was like prison. with my girlfriend, like like I want to not want to want it all the time. But oh, I can't. poor kid, man. Yeah, no, I remember being that way, where I was just like, like I tormented by. It. I was tormented yeah, by I it was that too. that I couldn't couldn't control this. Like I just I want you so bad, yeah. and I remember expressing that to her all the time, and it's just like. And this is, and I remember it back and forth in our relationship a lot because of that. Because I, I wanted that so bad. We also then you add in the fact too that she was also uh, Christian, and so she believed that this was all. So we were this mm-hmm. this guilt, right? So like we would do it, then it was like oh guilty. Oh, and so yeah. there was a lot of that. God, it's such a terrible. I did that same it, thing. It's so bad for you to yeah. go through that it process. Is, I don't know. You know, it isn't. It isn't the right? guilt part. Like you're demonizing. You know what happened? Look, you right. know how I mean, you ob- tab- Obviously, it would have been better, right? Obviously, it would have been better to have a parent like yourself or like one of us men in this room right. now that would communicate with your child and explain better. And I wasn't, but being the situation that I was in and with, I think the, the, where my parents were at in their lives and everything like that and what I went through, like it was probably better that I had that structure yeah. and that I, I well, found my own consequences. You know? yeah, right. It's like, yeah. So I, that was always like in the back of my head too. So it's like you, you go through that same thing. Like I, you know, I'm conflicted. Like, you know, I'm trying to be good person. Like I was always like trying to like, you know, pull myself back, but I was just like so raging, you know, yeah. like, like like trying to explain like my feelings there. And it was just like always coming off. Like I was such a raging asshole. Oh, totally. And I just felt so bad about it. Like constantly. I was, I was a terrible partner in that relationship. Yeah. I think back and I think like, Oh my God, this is the girl who I quote unquote thought I was in love with. We dated for years when we were in high school what a toxic, awful, yeah. you know, emotional, so I imma- took it all out immature on relationship the field, you know? I like, ah. that I had because I still <laughs> yeah. didn't know who the fuck I was or what my values were or what was important to me or even what was going on chemically in my body right now to make me feel and act this way. Like none of that is, none of that's connected yet at that point. No, in your life. no. And then on top of it, you've got that the high testosterone and then you're just 
you're more aggressive and competitive. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can remember like you'd be with your buddies and it's like, what are we going to do right now? Let's fight. Like, that's what we're going to do for fun. <laughs> yeah. That's a real, that's like really. Yeah, we had gloves and we would just be like, ah, let's do this. Yeah. You know how fun yeah. it is if we punch each other in yeah. the face or no, if, we, I, like, I, if, if some other group of dudes so walks by, we're going to look at them Dude, and yeah. we're all going to, we're going to wait and see if they look at us. I've if they look at us, this, we're going to fight. Yeah. I've yeah. shared this on yeah. the podcast yeah. a long time ago, but it was, it was, uh, this is like, this is not an exaggeration. Every single party that I went to with my cousin, which we did almost every weekend of our high school career. Uh, we would go to either his town or my town and we'd go out and we'd go to these big parties and it was guaranteed mm-hmm. if he was not getting, he was having sex, I wasn't having sex yet. So if he didn't get sex, if he didn't have a girl that he was hooking up with in the bedroom by the time he got it's, wasted. It's, 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 there's two expressions of testosterone. First choice, sex. Oh, right. I can't express it that way. Fight. fight. And yeah. a, it was like clockwork so like to the, the point where me and my other friends that would go, like we try, we try tell my cousin heading in time, like, hey, dude, let's not get in a fight tonight. Let's just have chill. I'm not in the yeah. mood to brawl tonight. Let's just go have a good time. And yeah. and he'd be like, yeah, yeah, man. He'd yeah, always be totally yeah, yeah. Then like the that. drinks start happening. Then he's going after girls. And my cousin was good looking and got girls, so it was a 50 50 shot. This was going down. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. it wasn't otherwise. We would never go to parties. If all we did was fight, when we went to parties. I wouldn't go with my cousin anymore. But I love my cousin, and my friends liked hanging out with him. And a lot of times he did get girls and. But the times that he didn't, it was guaranteed yep. we were we were throwing down, and it was always him uh-huh. starting the fight. With, I had a friend just like that. Oh, somebody. Yeah. And then your cousin gets hit. Like, of course, I'm family. I'm first yeah, one yeah, to be yeah. over there, and then the, my friends to follow me, and then it was just this yeah, me and my cousins, stupid cycle. Me and my cousins just, just fight each other. There was nine of us, nine <laughs> boys, all the same age. That's we were really smart enough to fight other yeah, people. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, there was, <laughs> there's so many of us, right? And so we're constantly fighting for fucking dominance which you look at it now and you're like you're clearly primates you know like a pack, pack of dogs. yeah you're, you're obviously trying to fight to be who's the alpha or whatever right, but right. we used to fight each order. other all the time like it was always every family party was a fight between two of us always mm. always always and then when we got old enough to drive we stopped fighting each other and then we would race our cars like massive assholes. Yeah. Like the most dangerous I think of the shit I did in a car at that age when I, I was 16 and 17 I'm alive and I think like that is so irresponsible and terrible, bro. We raced. You ready for this? Sa- Santa Teresa, right? Santa Teresa is a, a, a boulevard, so it's like a two or three three lanes. It's a pretty big road, right? Yeah. We raced going backwards in our cars <laughs> down Santa Teresa as fast as we possibly could. <laughs> oh, shit. So like just stupid. in high school and stupid. Yeah, with like literally two years under your belt of driving. Yeah. Not even. <laughs> not even. I was right. like sixteen. Like we just got our driver's license and we went fucking backwards as long I as did we some could. Really bad. Yes. I mean, stupid shit. I took my car and it was a total piece of shit. But like, so that made me more like I was incentivized more to like really do some damage. And so uh, I would like drive home and there's this really windy road and there would be like these little offshoots where I could go on the dirt and like go through trees and I'd just like spin and whip it through there and then I ended up going all the way up this mountain you know like it's not even four wheel drive and I'm just spinning around my friend's like ah what are we oh doing? Like, yeah. And then we just like, I pulled the e-brake and we're flipping around. Oh, e-brake. Oh, man. E-brake. That's the it greatest. Was, we used to race. See, I live in the valley. We used to race in the fog, dude. I mean. Oh, my. Anybody, see, that's what I'm saying. It's anybody so who's dangerous. listening right now, too, knows like Modesto, wow. Tracy, Oakdale type of fog. If you're a listener from that area. You don't see shit. You cannot see the end of it. Like bad fog. Like you cannot see the end of your hood. But we grew up in it. So, I mean, I literally learned how to drive in that shit. So I just was to. It's crazy when I go back because I don't go back that often. And if, if once in a blue moon, like I'll catch a foggy, really foggy night or morning, and I'm scared to death. And, I, and it always <laughs> reminds me, <laughs> yeah. right? And I'm like, I'm fucking. Thir- I'm grown ass man right now. I've driven this a thousand times. I think to myself, Jesus, what was yeah. I thinking? Like yeah. how crazy I was, and the shit that we used to do racing on these old country roads, it, two lane roads. Dude, these hormones literally just like take over your thought process like you don't think like the way you should be thinking how many parents no. of like 15 and 16 year olds are we scaring the fuck out of right it's, now you should, you be, should scared. be scared though. you should That's... be terrified you should, maybe not there's, there's vehicles coming out that are automated maybe not sc- because kids fucking don't go anywhere anymore yeah, maybe, that, maybe it's better that way you know I what know, I'm maybe I don't yeah I think it's safer I remember one, t- one time enough. we got my cousin had a, a Dodge Neon because you know that somebody who's like 60 because we do have some 60 70 year olds that listen to the podcast are going like well we used to raise tractors down the hill we used to <laughs> 
yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like what's yeah. the fucking Footloose? We take, we take that we go yeah. chick, we play chicken with. It. I, I bet we you that's to, a real we game. We used to throw grenades at each other. Oh, they yeah. had greasers versus uh, jocks. You yeah. know, you had like the switchblades. Right. No, yeah. one time we were. They up, sung. There was a yeah. there's, <laughs> there's yeah. the foothills behind where I grew up, and you could go downhill <laughs> that. Yeah. We raced down that. My cousin pulls his handbrake, spins the car to the side, and there were people walking on the sidewalk. And I, it was, it was God that prevented us from hitting those people. <laughs> yeah. We literally, I mean, I, we probably brushed you them with the bumper. We I, probably brushed them with the, with the bumper and it wow. went by. And I remember looking back terrified and the woman was crying. Sometimes I feel like he's trying. <laughs> we actually made someone Oof. cry. Oh, Sometimes like, I think he's playing reverse me. psychology on us. Like he's, cause every once in a while I catch him like preaching over here. I'm like, whoa, dude, wait a I second. Know. Just yeah, like six months ago, we're trying to convince out. you something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, but that was, uh, those were good times, man. Dude. Testosterone is a, it's a hormone that, um, it encourages you to, <laughs> To seek out, uh, you know, to seek out risk, to take risk, to do all the crazy shit because we need to. Like humans need to do that, but it's also why men are uh, disposable because yeah. because we we kill ourselves all the time with stupid shit that right, we do. Right. I mean, all those all the accidents that that yeah. crazy accidents that happen. When you read a story, I don't need to know if it's a man or woman. I'll know if it's a man right yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. You know, person kills themselves trying to clean their chainsaw with a whatever. Yeah. I'm like, that's a guy. Well, this is why I like first to jump off this cliff, you yeah. know, with the way, yeah, like a, a squirrel suit. Like those squirrel suit guys. Yeah. Remember the videos we no, saw? No, no, I was just going to say, that I, was, that? I was just about to say how much I loved The Rise of Superman by Stephen Kotler because of this, because nowhere have we ever seen the evolution of us, like as far as risk versus danger type of deal that we risk versus reward, whatever that we've done in the past. Have we seen it as much as we've seen in extreme sports, how much we've evolved? Yeah. And you and I, we got to watch that because the X Games happen in our lifetime, right? Yeah, so before yeah. that, it was happening, just it wasn't televised, and it wasn't mm-hmm. not a lot of people were seeing. It. Well, now a lot of people have seen it. Well, I remember being a kid and really being into like kind of you know different sports. Like I was into BMX bike racing and things like that when it wasn't really popular. It wasn't on TV. You couldn't find it anywhere. Like I was into that stuff. Do you have the pegs in the back. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yeah. I, yeah, I had a mongoose by the way. Uh, Haro was a big oh, bike. Oh, Haro was a fucking yeah. gangster. That was so, the best one. Yeah. So I, you know, these were these were things that I was really into as a kid. I don't know why I was telling you the, the oh yeah, the rise of Superman with the extreme sports. So I remember the first time I seen a guy do like a backflip on a bike and it was just like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. And then it was like, you watched every year somebody yeah, yeah. did something more death defying and mm-hmm. crazy and what we're seeing. And you guys ever paid double, triple back flips with motorcycles dude the thing, <laughs> what the, the fuck the thing remember like when that first like travis persona or yeah uh, persona persona was like with the first to do like a back flip with yeah now they're doing that was the most insane thing that's I've amateur ever seen now. In my life yeah it is yeah. almost it's almost mandatory now if you ride a, if you do any sort of freestyle dirt well, bike you have to at least be able to do the back well, flip well, which right. is crazy trip off of this thought yeah, right it is crazy trip off this thought it's so ingrained in our being, we evolve to desire or want or seek out risk so much that life now is so safe that we do shit like that. Like we do stuff like jump off cliffs or Which jump out of airplanes so, because we need to feel it. Yeah. So little room for air. So little. I mean, but we do it on purpose. And we never did this on purpose before. Before the risk was. All right, trying got, to live. I got to get out of the cave. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, hopefully there might, we, be, a, there might hopefully be a lion we, over there. Right. Hopefully we find dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine you're huddled with your family in the oh, cave. Man. Think about this for a second. You're huddled and your yeah. your your wife or whatever with the baby crying. She's like, we need food. Yeah. You're like, hmm. Well, it's not just that. It's okay. Like I guess I gotta go get it. Yeah. Like, with, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's gonna go get the send food? Dave out? Yeah. Dave comes back. He's got a chunk out of his ribs. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> Dave's not gonna make it. This is why we also respect the fuck out of people that take those risks because they were the ones that brought the food back for the camp, right? No, you're right. Totally. Yeah. Like they're you know they're the ones that risking their yeah. We would. We, I mean, yeah. you could argue that we would not really evolve if we didn't have people no. always pushing the so, boundaries. So tr- so check this out. Nope. So I heard this argument once that there's a a larger percentage of people in America. With uh, can, like things like ADD, because ADD encourages that kind of behavior. And considering America is made up of all these immigrants that left their country to come to a place where there's no guarantees, you don't speak the language, but you can just try and make your own way. So it encouraged like those kinds of personalities to come here, and then they mm-hmm. produce their offspring. Oh, that's an yeah. interesting that thing. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, because I think about my grandfather. So my mom's dad. He first he went to Venezuela to work, and the conditions were—I mean, they were so poor in Sicily. Like anything was better than where they were. But hit the conditions in, in in Venezuela. He shared a room with nine other guys, 
He says there were, you know, cockroaches under his bed all the time. He worked and saved some money, enough money to bring himself to America and and buy a ticket on a boat for my grandma and her uh, her her two kids, my mom and her and her brother, to America. And my grandfather, I mean, he didn't know he had no connections or anything, and he just making it his on on his own. Ended up being was a custodian for a long time, and but those are crazy risk if you think about it. No, Imagine no, doing that. It's huge. Imagine risk. moving to China. There's no no one's gonna give you shit. You got to figure it out on your own. Yeah. You oh, know, I, and speak I, a new language. Oh no, that's cra- it's it forces you. To, you it forces you to. I mean, puts you in that that state, right? Do or die. And it's crazy. What I mean, we've. I remember talking about the transition that we made even in this business. I mean, we. I wanted us to be in a more starvation <laughs> yeah. mode. I you really, wanted us to quit our jobs before yeah. we were paying ourselves. I did. Don't yeah. worry, we'll figure it out. Right. right. And I, I believe yeah, you. We would yeah, we yeah. yeah. I just have kids. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's different. Like, shit, yeah. if I fuck but you, up. <laughs> but the, the point is that I, I just know that. Yeah, I know that that's back. when you put people like that, especially if you are you don't live by this like victim mentality and you're like, well, I will figure it out. I will survive. Yeah. I will not oh, let yeah. my kids starve. I would not sure. let my house, I would not lose my house or provide for my wife. So knowing where... You know, and then knowing that it's so easy, there's something about that, right? That's that's a kind of an extreme analogy. Well, once but we you, see we see little microcosms of that in everybody's lives every day. Yeah, yeah. Once you experience something like that, and you come out of it, and you you don't even have to succeed. You just come out of it, and you know you're like nothing majorly horrible, like you didn't die or anything. You build confidence in that ability. Totally. You know what I mean? Like every time you do that, every time you take a risk like that, and you come out of it, and you're like, well, that wasn't so bad. Then you start to become, you know, not fearless because it's always scary. But not afraid of being afraid. Right. If that does that if that makes any sense. No, no, right? no, absolutely. When I went down to when I went down to the Palm Springs area to buy basically buy a big portion of this big club and take the money that I had saved myself, which was like all close to a hundred thousand dollars I had saved. I went down there. I was twenty one years old, and I went down there. And you know the funny thing is, is I was more fearless then than, than the second time I started a business, mainly because I was so naive and yeah. ignorant mm-hmm. of what I was doing, like taking all that money and dumping right. it on something. Right. But I went down there, packed up my little Volkswagen Golf and That's drove funny. my ass down there. When I was 20, it was when I had moved to Chicago and just decided to get the fuck out of Dodge. And I didn't know anybody or what was going to happen. Or I had a, like a real serious girlfriend at the time and we were together for like four or five years. And I was just like, you know what? I'm out. I got to do something like crazy, shake it up and all that. And then ever since then, that was like, you know, that's where I started building confidence. Mm-hmm. That's that's what we have all in common. Yeah, that's one of the yeah. things that draws all of us. I mean, when I was 20 years old or 19, even going on 20. He has to be uh, younger than us. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you started 20 when like, I was 20. You're 19 now. He's I like, saw, I was 20. I mean, 19. I, saw, I mean, I'll be honest. It was 18. Well, I started though, working honest, at 24 yeah. Hour Fitness by 20. So I was when I moved here this summer before I, I was, I was 19 years old. I had done two years at junior college and I was in there by 17. And what it was, and what it was such a big deal about it, or why it was, it's, it's our stories are all so similar, is that, you know, I had I had moved out already by the time I was seventeen. I had bought my own, or bought not I was renting my own apartment, had a roommate, uh, was working, was going to junior college. Like I was an adult in my eyes, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, and I had lots of friends in the town. It was I lived in my hometown that I grew up in, that I was the popular kid in school, and I went to the junior college that was right up the road. So. Life was still like a big high school party for me mm-hmm. still. And that was actually what made me leave. I left my comfort zone. I left a you, place you that You could I, feel that you were being stifled, I'm sure. Y- yes. And, so, and, I let, and I let it happen for two years. For two years during junior college, I, I let myself... You know what? Show up for just the tests and just get by in the classes. And you know where are we going Friday night to party? Oh, spending money on my car because I was making money at my job and like kind of seeing where my life was going. And I was at even at that age, I was able to look at it and go like, No, I don't want this. I don't yeah. want as much as I love my friends. I had a girlfriend in town. I mean, it was a very difficult thing for me to say. I'm gonna uproot mm-hmm. myself. Moved to my sixty-year-old grandmother's house with rheumatoid arthritis, who's like just stays at home all day long. Right, I'm gonna go move in with her, and I'm gonna live in San Jose, something that I I don't know anything about. Right, and I'm gonna go finish my school because at that time, I was like, I need to I need to focus on school, and I if I'm gonna do it, I need to do it. And yeah, I was yeah, fucking yeah. around as way I felt I was because I was doing nine to twelve units, and and half of them I was just getting yeah, by. Yeah. So my attitude was, okay, I'm gonna take myself away from everybody I know, take me out of my comfort zone go live with my grandma where at least I have some security, you know, that like, okay, she's not gonna let me starve or whatever with that. She has a room I can rent from her. 
So that was the plan, and that was the, ba- the one of the, the best decisions I ever made in my life, and one of the most difficult because mm-hmm. again, I you know you, I was you, in a good place. What's that one saying? That in the pain of staying in a tight bud was was more pain than the pain than the pain of blossoming or something like that. It's just this old quote, but I, there's nothing for me. There's and I I, I know you guys are the same way. There's nothing for me worse than the feeling of being contained or stifled or not being able to grow. Like if I'm in a situation, I don't Mm -hmm. give a fuck what it is either. I could be making millions of dollars. I could be whatever. But if I feel like I'm, I can't grow, I'm stifled. Mm -hmm. It's like daily torture for me. I just can't handle it. And I will remove myself from the situation. Look, I, you know, one of the reasons why I left 24 hour fitness, I only worked for them for a few years. I was there the shortest period of time. I think you guys were, I know you were there for a lot longer and Maybe even you, you were too, right, Justin? You were there. Yeah. For, well, I left before Adam. So, yeah. Yeah. But I was I wasn't there. I didn't stay very long because I I, w- I reached reached this level, ran these clubs, and then just felt I didn't feel like I was growing or learning anything, and it just it felt painful. Well, think about how what a hard experience that was for me. I found I know you you oh, that was terrible. I I stayed there for a really long time, mainly because I, that was the reward for me making the big decision to leave my hometown. So I leave my hometown. And I remember like literally, I remember that being at my girlfriend's house, getting on the computer and like looking up potential like jobs so I could, you know, help pay for my room with my grandmother while I was getting, going through junior college. And at that time I had just been talking to my best friend and we had, and we were working out and we we're talking about, you know, it would be a cool like side job would be a personal trainer. Mm. And I was online searching for national certifications. And at that time, IFPA was the biggest one that I had kn- known of way back then. Um, in fact, I think this was even before NASM really started to mm. to happen, and so I think it was only like ACE, IFPA. There's only yeah, a NASM can thank 24 Hour Fitness for their oh, size 100, of 100, yeah, 100 yeah. percent, right? So I'm searching online for this possible, and I bought a national cert. So some of the money I'd saved up for work, I bought this national cert and had it delivered to the house. This, and I'm going to my grandmother's over the summer. I'm already studying for it uh, as this potential part time job that I might do. And it's crazy how it all worked out. Get there. I walk into the gym just to get a membership. They find out that I had known about 24 Fitness because of IFPA because I knew it was a recognized certification for them, and that got me basically. How the long? Job. How many years were you there? Longer than you think you like? How many years were you there? Where you're like, I just I'm not growing. I three and a half. Oh, for three mm-hmm. and a half years you were just torturing. for sure, for sure, yeah. Cause I, and I I remember and I've talked about it on the show like that, that vivid moment. It in it and even though I stayed there, at least my mindset changed. Right, so. You know, so then, then I fall in love with this career. I, I'm really good at it. I do well. I make good money. I buy my house by the time I'm 21. Like I, everything is, I'm in a very happy place. 401k benefits, saving sure. money, have the house, like doing what I love to do. That's why it was really challenging for me to leave, even though I wasn't growing anymore. And mm-hmm. so that's when I lost my, like once I had like really mastered my position and I was successful at it and I was known as one of the best in it, that once that had happened, I had lost the drive of the growth, like you're saying. And I was like, I need. I should be a DM by now. I should be at this level. Yeah. Like I was wanting that it's torture. And when I realized that you know it wasn't going to happen, that these guys, one had blackballed me from stories that I had told before on this show uh, of what happened in my early years in the career, just dumb decisions that I made, and it blackballed me forever. And they also loved me in that position because I made them a fuck ton of money because I was such a high producer. So I remember going like, what am I doing? I was 26 at that time. And I was like, what am I doing by letting this company dictate my personal growth? And the first step that I made in that direction to change that was I started looking up, because back then the the, the um, CEO used to send out a, a daily email that you could read, all management could read, and nobody fucking read it. you know. But it, it always highlighted like a book that he was reading or what the direction the company's going, whatever with that. Occasionally I read it. But at that time, starting then, I said, okay, like, Adam, why don't you set a goal like I'm going to get as smart as the CEO of this company? And so I began reading whatever he was reading. So whatever he was reading, whatever he was talking so that's about. That's where you were able to itch that, that, yeah. that so, growth bone. Or right. right. So then that triggered that. And so then I found that. <laughs> no, that was a weird, <laughs> yeah. you itched the weirdest, your growth bone. <laughs> weirdest like analogy for whacking off I've I mean, ever heard. You, 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 got, <laughs> you got to itch that growth bone. You know what I mean? You know what, you though? Know it, what made, it made sense in my head. <laughs> and enough for me to say, yeah. It came out, gotta, yeah. He understood what I was itch, saying. Itch so, yeah. growth bone. We were just in it. We were in a flow right yeah. there. It came out, though, and I heard it come out my mouth. I'm like, yeah. You're evaluating yeah. it. Oh, yeah, I caught that. <laughs> yeah. But that's so that fulfilled me for a long time, right? Because what another thing I used to always say when I worked there was, man, 
it would take probably one and a half times or two times my income to get me to leave because I really love the job that much. Sure. I love people. I love training. I love being in a gym. I love the environment. I really, I love the competitiveness of the company. I really believed in the company at the time when I was there. So, you know, I used to, people get offer me jobs all the time that were six figure jobs. And I'm just like, even if it was a little bit more money, yep. I'm like, that's not enough for me to leave this place. Mm-hmm. I fucking love this place right now. You would have to offer me somewhere between Probably one, and I used to think I used to say this, 150 to 200 plus would get me. And that's exactly what happened. I finally had somebody who offered me a ridiculous amount of money. So even though it was in an area, I had no desire. I knew nothing about cannabis. You know, at that time, I was not like pro cannabis or smoking or any of that shit. So I was like, uh, but it was the money that made me say, hey, I always said that I would leave this place if someone offered me a money that I couldn't refuse. And I said, you know what? I'll give it a year. We'll see where this takes me. And that the rest is history. Oh no, I I I, la- I mean I was I, it was so painful me for me towards the end there that I just I didn't even want to be there. I had a district manager that was just he was just and, and this and I got a better one after Reggie was actually with the last DM I worked for. And Reggie's a great guy. I feel bad for Reggie because he got me when I already decided I don't want to fucking be here anymore. Right, right. But the guy before him, uh, I don't want to say his last name. His first name was Jeff. Terrible, <laughs> terrible district manager. Jeff. The worst. Like he was Smith. A, he was. He, <laughs> He was garbage, and he'd come in and crap everybody out. And it, the, the real reason why, and it wasn't that I hated working for him. That's not what made me quit or want to quit, although I didn't like working for him. It was that the company promoted someone like him over someone like myself, right. who I didn't think I was the greatest. Actually, I did think I was the greatest, but for sure, I could run circles around this, this before guy. before we met. Yeah, I could run circles <laughs> around this guy with, with a blindfold on. So they, you know, they're making this guy my boss, and I'm like, oh, so I made up my mind. I, I wasn't growing anymore. It was just getting on my nerves, and it was easy for me. See, I was never angry, like even as, and I drug it out longer than anybody, right? So I stayed there for over eight years. Yeah. I, was, I think it was on nine. And, I, nine I, I, I would not have lasted. I was coming up on my, because I remember when I was wanting to leave, it was actually after we had a meeting at your house. Yeah. And then, like everybody was in That's dissension, right. I and I, I don't remember what the what caused that. Oh, I know, I remember very vividly, and I know what I did to to respond to it and why I didn't leave. So, and I remember all the about that. So, I got all my trainers. We were going to do like a mass walkout. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, that's what it was. And yeah, yeah, so we were so all on board. What they had done, the company had had rolled out this uh, new comp plan. Oh, yeah. And it really fucked me. They used to do this shit all the time. Oh, they did it every so year. Stupid. I, went, I think I went through. I think yeah. I went through. How can we make the top guys earn less money? Right. That's what it was. It was, I think I, well, yeah. what they did, or narrow that. that that's, that's right. What, that's They'll the bring thing. the bottom up a little bit, bring the top down. Right. So you, they punish you. Right. And so I think that, or they punished just a few that were at the very top, right? right? For the is, most part, which it brought Which is, by the way, dumb business. Well, what the theory behind it, the math behind it, they. It's, I understand the math, but from a leader's shit yes, perspective, okay, yes. so that's your top I, guy. I agree with you, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean, from from a the way a CEO is trained, the, the schooling that they go through, the education they go through, it made perfect logical sense to do what they did. They but they brought the medium up because they knew that people like yourself, like the like the gentlemen in this room, are outliers. That they're you're not the majority, and mm-hmm. yeah, we're gonna lose those few special people, but we're gonna bring up the the middle so much more by yeah, doing. But what this. they don't realize is those top people are the rabbits. They're the rabbits in the yeah. company oh, that yeah. everybody chases. I mean, it definitely backfired. Yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I yeah, I hundred percent believe that it backfired. And I forget why I was telling you that. Why are we uh, talking about the? They did something that made you do the yeah, walk, so we're mass, do walkout. A mass walkout. Oh yeah, we we're gonna do a walkout because walk. It sounds so funny to say that, like it's a fucking what you call it, right? From uh, <laughs> what movie is that? Where they we're gonna have a walkout? Oh yeah. 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 Uh, Lander. Yeah, it's one of my favorite. Walk off, yeah. walk off. It's a walk. It's a walk off. Yeah. No, so they the the company had Ed Hansel. Yeah, right. Yeah. The company had done a, a comp plan again. I think I went through eleven of these comp plan change, and it is. It was always to benefit the company. That's the better way to put yeah. it, right? Mm-hmm. It's always they're always geared to benefit the company, not the employee, right? So, but this time it was really a shitty thing they did. They they just cut directly into their pay. Like it wasn't normally you, if you, I could get my team together and I could rally them and I'd say, listen, I know it's, this sucks guys, but now if you just learn to sell packages like this or we yeah, do. Yeah, you teach them how to play. Yeah, yeah. I would teach yeah. them how to still make the money they were, they were used to. This is a lot of difference that I, I think I was as far as a fitness leader. Like I, I didn't speak as much to like as far as my biomechanics and understanding of nutrition and the level I'm at. You're trying to optimize our paychecks, which right. I always appreciate. I think everybody yeah. did. And I think that was one of the things that was unique about how I led was I, Absolutely. most everybody that was working there, as much as they loved to help people, they were also motivated to, to make money and do well, right? So I always taught those things. So my trainers, I would teach them how to keep still making good money and be okay. And I remember when this comp plan came out, I was like, 
I, there's nothing I could t- teach them. There's like, yeah. there's, there normally you always gave me like an incentive, like, hey, if you sold more, then you make this much more. But if you just worked more, yeah, this one they just fucked everybody. Yeah, it was literally like everybody is getting a, a, a you know, a two dollars and fifty cents cut in your hourly pay, like over off the top, which just automatically cuts everybody by. And that was really tough for me. And that was for me. I remember thinking like for the first time ever, I was like, fuck this company. I'm like they are. They it's not about them. It's all about trying to show that they can go so they can go public, mm-hmm. you know, and show profits because a new CEO comes in. That's right. And all he's trying to do is they're trying to cut costs. Cut costs. That's yep. the easiest way. When you're a billion dollar company already, one of the easiest things. I mean, I see that even with the irony it, of that is it fucked them so bad. It did. It yeah. did. They come in, they cut costs like crazy so they can show that they're worth a lot more money and they're profiting a lot of money and they're having they had one of the best years of their life. But it really isn't about gross. It's that they've just improved the net. So this time they did that, and I was like, "Fuck, this company is going to be done soon. They're going, they're going to sell, and it's going down the drain." It's like, I'm gonna, ra- I'm gonna bring all my trainers who are all nagged out. They're all fucking pissed at work, and I'm now I'm fucking pissed for, for them. And we all got together and we talked about starting one of those uh, 24 hour fran- uh, franchise chains. Oh, you know the ones where you swipe. Yep, right. yep. Like Snap. Was it Snap Fitness? That's yes. Yeah, is that one of them? There's one like one that. It. it was yeah. What was? The I other almost one bought though? one of those. I can't even think of the name right now. I know, the, the I, yeah, one that I know we exactly did. Oh, Fitness about. 19? Yeah. No, 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 not a Fitness 19. These are the ones where the, the people had their own car. And it's 24 hours. No, 20, nobody were. I remember that. Yeah. I it, almost bought one. Literally, it only it only takes three to five employees, I think they oh, say. What's to, it called? I know, it's driving me crazy. Pissing I can't think of the name of it right now, but. You it's know, like purple kind of yes, color. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so we yeah. all got together. Anytime fitness. Anytime. Anytime. Fitness. Good, job. Go. Good job. Good job. Good job, Justin. So that was it. We almost did a big old walkout. Um, now, what the way I fixed it, and I don't know if you remember this, and this was a big deal for me, or it was a, this was a very proud moment for myself, right? Justin probably doesn't even fucking remember. He didn't, obviously. <laughs> so uh, I prided myself on taking care of my people. This was something where the company fucked me, and I was like, what am I going to do to take care of my people? And I... What made it made me think outside the box. I thought, you know what? Has anyone ever asked for the special ability to sell at a higher level than anybody else no, in the I company? That. And I was I like, using that immediately. And so, like, could selling, you, selling really so yeah. high priced uh, programs. So, what so it, you could sell higher rate than so, what the company right? Was, so the yeah. company for if you twenty four fitness, if That's you so funny. If, if you buy personal training there, it's a standard rate across, and that makes sense because that way you could transfer. You your know training. what happened with that? So I took that model with me and was super successful on my own. Okay, so you remember? That's good. Yeah, no, That's I good. literally did. <laughs> you probably don't. Remember I didn't remember like, it came from you though. I thought that you know this idea was just not. there. Of course, not. and I was like okay. that arrogant trainer. I, I, I didn't I, give you any credit. I taught, I taught you that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did, and it's why this was such a big deal. This is I don't know anybody else still to this day in in company history that has done something like this, and I didn't even know if I could do it because I and I did get pushback right away. They were like. What? You most people most most managers. But how looking, can they give you real pushback because they're going to make the same amount or well, more? Well, that's the reason why I originally got it approved. They, and then what they did was they they gave me a thirty day approval that I had to prove that it wouldn't hurt sales. They were concerned that if this was the most expensive place to buy training, they would go one mile up the road because sure. there's twenty four. Sure. Every twenty four hour fitness has got yeah, five. But we still have the same price. Like no. stru- I thought that we had that, and then the options were to, to no. upsell them. No, no all the options went because I always upsold them. Anyway. Anyway. No, I brought yeah. I brought all rate I brought all of our rates to be uh, higher than the ultra sport trainer the, the ultra sport which at that time was the most expensive place that you could buy personal training through twenty four hour fitness and everybody thought it was they thought it was crazy and about it but what it did because you guys made a percentage of the dollar that people spent you, you made it, more it made your it it brought up in right. fact you guys were, it wasn't making much more but I I saved everybody from taking a pay cut by just charging more and I told, convinced all my trainers that listen you guys are fucking better than we all know we're better than everybody yeah. else in the area so you're already the top trainers in the area they knew that I've been telling them that for years why wouldn't we charge a higher rate than our neighbors? Don't be afraid. And all my trainers were like gangster. They're like, fuck yeah, let's do it. Yeah. And we did it and we killed it and we kept it. And I don't even know if they've ever changed. I'm assuming they've changed the rates back to normal, but that was one of the ways that I fought yeah, for my after team. That, and- I knew even before that, like I was always trying to sell just the biggest you know, package I could. That was it. Like mm-hmm. I, wasn't, I didn't even want to bother with 10 packs and all that shit. I'm just like, I'll go right for the jugular. Mm-hmm. And that was literally what carried me into then doing that on my own was just like, well, what's everybody else charging? I'm just going to like fucking charge way more, mm-hmm. you know, and then just kept going. But How deliver. much can I charge here? But 100% deliver. Because there was deliver. the charlatans out there 
that were doing an absurd amount mm -hmm. of money charging and they're providing shit service. Mm -hmm. And I saw that. And so I was like, man, that's massive opportunity oh, yeah. for me. Oh, no, it's a clean house. It's funny too, because so, because I started selling training back when a top club, club, yeah. would sell less than $20,000 in training. That's mm -hmm. so, crazy. so like Hillsdale's goal, when I was a personal trainer there, their goal was $13,000 for the whole club. Now we're talking about clubs that, you know, in their heyday were producing over $100,000 in personal training. So just to show you the difference. So I, I was selling personal training. I was selling ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month Which by was myself. insane and unheard of at the time. It didn't, I got investigated so many times <laughs> from internal security <laughs> Because they thought that I was bullshitting or making shit up. Nobody right. could figure out you know, what, what I was doing, what was going on. When I ran Sunnyvale, we sold over $30,000 in accessories from the gym, like locks and gloves, gloves and, and stupid shit. shit. Yeah, almost $30,000 wow. in apparel and accessories. Hustling. And the way we did it, and everybody was like, again, I got investigated. How is he doing it? I just uh, trained my salespeople how to sell those accessories with membership. Yeah, package it in. If you, package it in. And if you get this membership, this is what you're going to want. Do you want to get the starter pack, which includes gloves, a lock, and creatine, and this, that, and the other? And people would walk out. They'd buy the $200 membership, but they'd walk out spending $275 because they got all this extra stuff. And we just blew it out. And then this, these are things that they started implementing later on oh, yeah. in the company. But yeah, once I, once I lost that ability, that flexibility, because there was a point where they were like, no, you can't go off the script. Yeah. You, no matter what you're doing, even if you you have integrity, whatever, you have to do exactly we what want we tell uniformity. you. Uniformity. Yeah, and yeah. and once I started losing that, it's like it just wasn't it wasn't fun. It wasn't exciting. I I couldn't figure out new ways of doing me, different things. They kept me a lot longer too because I also you know around I don't know what comp plan change it was. So they grandfathered me in. So I got to there was a time there was a time when I left. By the time I left. There was not a single peer of mine that had anywhere. In fact, it got to the point where my bosses and stuff would come in and be like, "Listen, you can't, you can't share your salary and stuff with people because we no longer even have anybody mm -hmm. in, in in the area that is making the same kind of money that you're making plus for your you position because they were phasing it. Plus, you were out. in fitness. In fitness, you're the usually the best, best, best leaders and salespeople would transition to general Always. manager. There's so, more money to be made there. So you were like, I mean, you're, 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 you were in a world where you were just, you were killing everybody. That was an, yeah, nobody, was an anomaly for sure. Yeah, yeah. There was nobody in fitness like that. Because I went from fitness, I went to sales, and then, you know, obviously general manager. And that's typically what guys like you would do. Well, they always wanted me to do that because obviously – I would make more that way. Like I, you got to think the revenue that I did with the amount of leads that I got is nowhere near what a counselor or a salesperson is. Like those yeah. guys got practice 10, 20 leads a day. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they could, they could easily see 10, 15 guests in a day mm -hmm. yeah. and be practicing and, and better. And, and, we, and we all know, like the more you're doing that oh, stuff, it's all reps, yeah. right? So a lot of my, and I did a lot of reps too, though, you know, but just nowhere near the amount of reps no, that I would sure. be getting there. And the, the, I wouldn't be seeing as many people, which then would give me the opportunity. But I really, so I tracked everything. I was always into, tracking my stats and that's why I'm still in Actually, that. that's something yeah. that I will say a hundred. Well, there's, there's a lot of things that I learned uh, from 24 hour fitness, but one of the things that I really learned really well was, and something that they did that was brilliant way ahead of anybody else in fitness. Nobody did this in fitness was they broke shit down so much that we would get these reports every day that told you leads, closing percentages, right. told you what kind of memberships so you sold motivating. percentages, you know, you're, yeah. I mean, it broke everything down to where you had this report every day. And if you, even if you were a shitty or just average leader, if you were just an average leader, an average manager, but you can just push the numbers on the, on the reports and understand how to, what screws to tighten, which ones to loosen just off that, yeah. pff, you'd blow people away. Well, this most is clubs were running, most gyms, you got to understand at this time, most gyms were running blind. Oh, completely. They didn't know yeah. any of this shit. Well, that's, yeah. it, it was still no, right. so small. 24 was the first ones to break into a billion dollar business. And that's really when it turned into an industry. You know what I'm saying? There's somebody out there in the fitness space that's making billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. What are they doing? I'll tell you what no, they're that doing. That report was so brilliant. They were the first people in that space. You know, Mark Mastroff is why he's the greatest ninja of all time as far as the, in the fitness, in my opinion, in fitness is Dude. because he brought the business. This is what I loved about the place and why yeah. I always recommend that if somebody is considering getting into training or into fitness and wants to own their own club or run their own business, that getting the training at a, at a large facility like that, that has huge operating cost, 
the amount of systems that have to be in place mm-hmm. to execute at that level. And that's something that... Oh, it's brilliant because then what they would do is rather than telling you, yes, you had a total gross goal, you had a goal for EFT, you had a goal for training, a lot of stuff. Yeah. But then they would also give you goals that were metrics on, the, on, on your reports. So they'd say to you, the goal this month is to sell X amount of these memberships or we want this many of these prepaid type programs or we want these, this many leads yeah. because they knew the number so well that literally someone from the very top could look at a club, look at their numbers, and figure out where the they were. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. It was brilliant. And well, I didn't realize how brilliant bird, it was. Eye view. I well, had no idea how brilliant it was because I grew up in it. That's the education that is that has been applied even to this business right now. Like mm-hmm. I don't know how many times I meet podcasters and I, I'm talking to them. Oh, they don't and know. Any, yeah. I, I know exactly how many podcast that we have to to be on to generate x Each amount month. of dollars right. yeah i know what it what it where we need to be to make sure that we hit a baseline revenue and that's and that's from that that's from learning yeah. and un- understanding like okay don't just look at it like oh we need to make this much money how many do it well all these things going working towards all these things help contribute yeah. to that and just running crazy like no that was one of the things they had taught me to really unpack my business go like well this is the end goal is to make x amount of dollars a month but how do you how do you unpack that and it was show, brilliant. Think build about- the formula mm-hmm. to do that? So then you could focus on just mm-hmm. parts of the formula, like, okay, let's just worry about the leads. Like, right. we just got to get leads first. Because yeah, you already you get, know what that means. Right. You just need to get leads because if you're going to get leads, because then you can try and convince them to get in the gym. And then once you convince them to get in the gym, then you could talk about being better uh, at getting them to show up. And then when they show yeah. up, you get better at closing them. This percentage rate. Yes. Yeah, we're at this closing rate and all this stuff. Yeah, you figure that out. It's based all simple off of now. How many leads do I need to pull in just to you know maintain my numbers? To, to I could tell that. you my sales people's, I could tell you how many leads my sales people need to see mm. because I knew what their show percentages were. I knew what their closing percentages were. I knew what their price per sale was, which is another thing that, I mean, these are all brilliant numbers that, or, or think about it this way. This is a company which that Google at, now provides at, everybody in, in every business. Yes. At the time, gyms were, they were, you know, you just ran a gym. How much, what was your sales? Oh, great. But you had no idea how you got there. It was just like, we don't know. They knew exactly what was happening, but not only did they know, mm-hmm. they were smart enough to teach lower people how to do that. And then the lower people like when you're a general manager, if you're a good general manager, you teach your salespeople how to read those reports and you go over these reports with right. them. And it just went down the chain until, I mean, those were the brilliant things that that company did. For sure. Absolute brilliant For things. Sure. Yeah. Uh, somebody just recently asked a question about uh, our training experience. They DM me. So this was such a good episode, like as far as the things that I think we got from that. You know, there was so much that I learned about business going through that through a company like that that I would never would have learned had I gone to like it was the best pro- school I could have ever I could have I couldn't have found a school to pay there, there's no school in the world that would have taught me as much in a short period of time as 24 hour fitness 100% yeah. that experience that I went there at, at that, that time yeah as I say at that time mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like, I don't know if it's like that in anymore. this space I don't like, think so yeah I, you know I don't know it's got to still be there I mean I feel like they're from what I've heard hmm. that they're they've changed or they're trying to go back to the old you know model that kind of worked and developed because let me tell you something. I think we're speaking at one soon here. I know we have gold yeah, next we'll have week. To ask. week after. Yeah, we'll like, Because I'll tell you something. That era, that. Okay. that era that I was there, which was late 90s, early 2000s, created, produced some monsters. And what I mean by that is these are guys and girls that I know that who were top performers in the company who learned these systems, learned how to read all these numbers, learned the ways that they were taught from this. But they were also exceptionally talented I don't. If single, every single one of them is a millionaire now. Every single one of them oh. has gone off to do their own thing and is now extremely successful. I, mm-hmm. I know guys who were like B and C players from there who now are millionaires. Yeah. Like that was yeah. incredible training ground. It yeah. was, man. You saw it. Like everybody, yeah, from there. Like you said, I just noticed like how efficient they were once they did anything else because it was just so instilled mm-hmm. in them. Like these practices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally still apply all that love, same stuff today. Total love hate relationship with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's bittersweet. Uh, so we all have Instagram pages uh, with uh, different information. Dude, on you those know pages. what I want you to tell everybody? Tell everybody uh, the YouTube thing that I didn't realize. That you're, I think it was your son that was schooling you on. Ooh, the bell. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, you know because people don't know that we put out at least three good, to five good really good informative videos, sometimes fun and playful too. Maybe but that's why we didn't see your video, Sal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, you know if mean? you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you still won't get notified when we drop a new video. You Gotta have to click on the little bell thing. The little bell. The little bell means that you're going to get notified as soon as we drop uh, a new video. And then what I was saying earlier, we all have Instagram pages. I'm at Mind Pump Sal. 
Adam's at Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>